TikTok, time to rock. Does everyone, does everyone feel the demons trembling when the powers of Christian Prince and Sam Shimon unite against the forces of darkness? I see them. There we go. <laughs> TikTok, time to rock. Whoa. Hey, man. Put down your volume, sir. Huh? You don't even follow your own rules. No, that's oh, not okay. my computer. Oh, who was it? <laughs> Whose computer is that? I, I, I muted my computer from my side. Maybe it's... You need to repent, Abdul. All right. <laughs> yeah, potato. All right. I All right. All right. Hi. Now, yeah. All right. Everyone in the, uh, everyone in the uh, chat is saying hi. By the way, I just want to say, hey, guys, have you noticed? I just trimmed my, my goatee. Tell me I don't look much younger, I'm younger, healthier, and more handsome. I am double B, big, uh, not big, bald and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, my view is, Sam, um, the more facial hair, the better, because it kind of covers up your face. Um, but you can't, you, for real, being honest, you, you just can't, you can't beat a, a paper bag, man. Go old school. Paper bag. This is what we call about white, white supremacist, supremacist haters, dictators. I have the spiritual gift of encouragement. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, uh, we are, uh, what did I call this? The life and death of Muhammad. The life and death of Muhammad. So all kinds of issues, but we wanted to get through as much as possible. Sam's going yes. to be leaving uh, on Tuesday. So no, tomorrow worry. night will be my last uh, live stream with Sam while he's here in person. And um, wanted to get uh, Christian Prince back while Sam was still here so that all three of us could be here at the same time. And we are going to go through a bunch of issues related to Muhammad, and we welcome the Muslims who are in the chat to offer responses. Uh, a lot of these are going to be issues that we brought up uh, over the past week and a half, where we told Muslims, hey, we'll bring this up again, so you guys can go look up responses. You can go check with your apologists. You can check with your imam, so you can give us the best answers possible, and we can see whether there is any defense whatsoever for uh, your, your prophet. Um, Christian Prince, I had a quick question for you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, now, when when we examine the evidence for Islam, so so over the years, Sam and I have been uh, interacting with Muslims, and uh, for years, Muslims have come up to us. Here's the great evidence for Muhammad. Here's this awesome uh, prophecy about Muhammad in the Bible. Here are all these prophecies. Um, Muhammad is the greatest man ever. He must be a prophet. Uh, there are all these miraculous scientific claims in the Quran. Muhammad, Muhammad uh, made prophecies about the future that were fulfilled. So um, these are all things that we're actually able to examine. So as soon as we start examining the arguments that Muslims give, they, they, they fall to pieces. And so they eventually retreat into this position of, well, if you only read all of this in Arabic, then you would see that it's clearly, clearly and indisputably true. So my question for you is, uh, you're able to read all this stuff in Arabic. How can you resist the overwhelming, powerful arguments for Islam when you understand the Arabic? That's right. And CP, before you answer, let me begin in prayer. Do you mind? I know you don't mind. Absolutely not. Because that's my habit. I really know, and you guys believe, it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit we can do what we do. So we praise you, Father. And we praise you, Lord Jesus, the Father's heart, His beloved Son. We praise you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way with us. Bless us. Bless CP. Grant us clarity of thought and speech to recall this information, interpret it accurately for the glory of Jesus, to bless the people of God and convict Muslims to repent and watch over us. <clears throat> Unite us to Christ always and seal us for the glory of Jesus always, Holy Spirit. We depend on you. We need you. We love you. And also bless our loved ones, our family, in my case, my daughters. Have your way in Jesus' name. We love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, CP. Rock and roll. I mean to that. Uh, first of all, I would like to say to the Muslims who say that uh, the, uh, in Arabic you can see how amazing Islam is. Isn't it the Arab in the time of Muhammad? Isn't it the Muslim they say that many, many years Muhammad he did not, did not have more than 70 followers and most of them they are his slaves, the slaves of Bakr and the slave of his wives and the slave, his own slaves. So how come the Arab, like if we go to chapter 2, 25, chapter 8, 31, 16, 24, 23, 83, 25, 5, 27, 68, 46, 17, I mean, etc. 
uh, we can continue. All of them says that this is nothing but the fairy tales of the ancient, and we heard them before. Actually, in chapter 8, verse number 31, they say, and when uh, our, our uh, verses are recited to them, they say this is nothing, if, if we wish, we can say even like this, but this is nothing but the fairy tales. So this is how the opinion of the Arab who speak pure Arabic. Secondly, I don't know, I'm sure you, both of you, uh, David, you know that Muhammad, he claimed that Allah, he sent him the Quran in seven letters. Mm -hmm. And what was the reason Allah, he sent him the Quran for seven letters? Muhammad, he explained the reason. He said that my people are not capable of doing it. Okay, we are talking about who? We are not talking about uh, a brother and sister. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how I made in the Quran. It's so beautiful. And when you do the Quran, you feel like this is the book of God. But Zakir Naik don't speak Arabic. Same as Didat. Same as Shabir Ali. So how those who don't speak Arabic, they can understand the Quran. When Muhammad, he said that the Arab who they are a pure Arab, and this is their pure language, they are not capable or not able to understand or even to recite the Quran unless it is in seven dialect. And why a little tiny tribe like Quraysh? They need seven Quran in order to do so. But yet a nation like Indonesia who have more than 700 languages and ethnic groups, they can understand the Quran in a language they don't even speak. And remember, by the way, this is Sahih Muslim as an example, hadith number 821, where you see Muhammad, and you can find it in the Al-Bukhari too, Muhammad saying clearly that this is my people are not capable of doing it. So obviously the Quran is not good enough. You need seven Quran, according to Muhammad, not to me. So the Muslim cannot say. Secondly, the Quran said that Allah, he never sent a, a book or a messenger unless he speak in the tongue of his own people. Chapter 14, verse number four. Never. Now, as long Allah, in order to send a book in the language of Muhammad, he needed to send seven Quran. That's me and Muhammad. He should be the same as, don't they say, uh, David, that uh, Musa is the same as uh, Muhammad? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Musa says he should have seven Torah. And Isa, he have to have seven gospel. And all other messengers, which Muslims quote in their books, 25 messengers, all of them, they should have seven, 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 seven books for the same book. And here you will see how silly the statement Muhammad is coming with, which is proven to us that neither Islam, neither Muslims really, they understand their religion unless you have seven books. And now if we ask the Muslims, where is the seven Quran? What they will do? Exactly. Before, I want to ask him a question. Before you got a gentleman, I think it's time for him to be sent on his merry way. Jesus' father, he blasphemes and just said that because Christian Prince and I are both single, that he's going to unite us together, marry us and bless us. And he calls himself Jesus' father. I think he needs a <clears throat> ticket to Mecca to smooch the black stone. CP, with that said, here's a challenge for you, though, because this is your time. We want the Lord Jesus to use you with your knowledge of Arabic. And by the way, guys, I don't say in front of him. The reason why we have him is when CP is on, we're all students. This man is a walking encyclopedia. They call me encyclopedia. I may be shaped like one, but he is the encyclopedia. So, CP, but you know that the Arabs... Before Muhammad's called the Prophet, and even after Prophet called him Al Amin, he was trustworthy. What are you talking about? How do you answer that? Um, you know, Al Amin, <laughs> uh, you know, he have 99 names, and I find that all of them uh, is, is a fiction because remember the Quran speak that even the Muslims accuse Muhammad that he stole a piece of a clothing. Hmm. So, how he is the Amin? And then somebody accused him that he took an underwear. If we go to chapter 3, <laughs> verse 161, and you read the interpretation of the Abdulism cult, not us. I, I, I will not say this is my statement. You can go and open any interpretation. You will see the Muslims are fighting over an underwear, accusing their prophet that he is the one who took it. And by the way, it is red. So if Muhammad is the Amin, and he is very well known by such a name and title, Usually we earn titles, we don't give them to ourselves unless you are a false king. You make a title and everybody have to call you by that title. And this is exactly what Muhammad he claimed. But in reality, the Quran proved to us a different story. 
In chapter 3, verse 161, it says, etc. So it's not for a prophet to be a fraud and to be a thief. And the one who do that is going to be brought in, in the day of judgment and he will pay for what he did. So here you see Muhammad, as usual, he made Quran to defend himself saying, it's not me who took it, but you will not tell us. Imagine Allah is the one who owes all knowing. Shouldn't Allah he tell us who is the one who took the underwear? So until now, as we speak, the underwear is missing. Uh -huh. Muhammad not to prove to be honest because unless we find who is the one who took it, it's just a statement of the thief. Imagine you are a thief accused in the court and then in the court you say, I witnessed that Allah told me that I am not a thief. You know, so Muhammad, he could not bring a proof that he is not a thief and the, the, the accusation is still there and Allah himself could not tell us who is the thief, which is confirming that Muhammad is a thief because remember, Allah is God supposedly and he knew who took it. So shouldn't Allah send a message saying, okay, it's not Muhammad who took it. It is a Christian prince who took it. Go into his house, check his closet and you will find the underwear there. So Allah could not do that because obviously he is a fake God. There's one or two options. Either Allah do not know or Allah he knew that it is Muhammad. Otherwise, he should say who is the one who took it. So how he can be the I mean, secondly, is not it Muhammad who went to the house of his own son? According to the Muslim books, and he flirted with the wife Zainab when she was standing and she said to her in Arabic, Subhanu Mu'allifu al Praise be to Allah, the one who flipped my, my heart for you. How a person who is a trustworthy, he go to, forget about Zaid is a, is a, is a friend. Uh, or, or, or let us say he's a friend, not a son to Muhammad. Imagine you have a friend. He claimed that you, he is a closer friend to you. In the top of that, he claimed that he is a prophet of God. And then he go to your house when your wife is alone. And then he flirt with her loudly. You see, there's people that might be tempted, but they don't announce their sin. They are not proud about it. Like a man can be tempted. This is true. But Muhammad, there is no way that he spoke loudly saying, praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart flip for you, unless he wanted her to hear his flirting. This guy is speaking to her, announcing that he want her. Otherwise, why he said that? Unless Muslim, they want to say that Muhammad was controlled by the black magic again, and shaitan, he, he throw some, <laughs> some falsehood in his mouth. Um, uh, Christian Prince, um, <clears throat> um, I think we can lay it down as a rule that if you uh if you can't trust muhammad around your wife you probably can't trust him with your salvation you know what i mean precisely now uh uh uh, uh before sam rudely yeah. interrupts here uh, I'm gonna give him a question. uh we, we did have uh we did have um uh, someone asking uh what christian prince's youtube channel is i wanted to point out guys that i have uh christian prince's links in the description box there's a link to his facebook page his minds account his patreon in case you want to support him um his youtube channel and his books on right. amazon so you can get all of that info right there and feel free to uh to uh post that multiple times um during the uh during the broadcast but uh si since you did uh since you did a little zucker nike impression right there i just sent you a couple of lines on skype uh for for, for everyone who's been following muhammad's boom boom room that series you'll know that muhammad occasionally has to call up Dr. Zucker Nike to ask uh, how he can get out of some contradiction or something. Uh, anyway, we need a couple of uh, Zucker Nike lines to hear on the phone when Muhammad is in trouble. So I sent you a couple of lines. These are from Zucker Nike talking to Muhammad on the phone in order to rescue him. So uh, if you could read those lines, then I'll have them recorded and then I can uh, I can dub those into the video. Brother Zeta, peace upon you. Brother makes a good point. Christian corrupt the Bible. And many different Bible, 40 different Bible, and the candle of Nikia. Peace be upon you. We are mentioned in the Bible, peace upon you. Book of the Germany, chapter 19, verse number 18. You are the prophet like Musa. Peace be upon you. And brother and sister, if you heard of somebody, his name is David Wood. That guy, he is really a liar. And I confirm that to you, and I can prove it to you very easy. As an example, he said that the prophet, he stole an underwear. The fact it was not underwear. It was a swimming suit. And this is the proving that they corrupted those people. 
And there is a guy next to him. His name is Santa Moon. And he is, he's actually, I'm going to show you why he's a liar. He lost his hair because he lied. Each time he lied about the prophet, he lost one of his hair. And this is, this is proof that he's a liar. And there is a guy, his name is the Crap Princess. And this guy is the biggest fat liar ever. As an example, he said that the prophet, he flirted with his with, with the wife of his son, Zainab. The fact, she is the one who flirted with him because he's so handsome. He's so beautiful. The prophet, he is the most beautiful person in the world. And see, each time he walk in the street, evil woman that tried to kidnap him. And this is why my brother and sister, we don't have a picture for the prophet because he's so handsome. And if a woman, they see his picture, they will not think about us and they will not sleep with us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, m most mm -hmm. of that was just uh, freestyling. Uh, I only had a couple lines. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ansari here said, uh, David, repent before you end up like Nabil. You mean, you mean like... In the presence of the Lord Jesus, why nice. would I want to? Why would I? Why would I want to? Uh, why would I want to repent before I end up completely like that? healed, cancer-free, more alive, living forever in the presence of Jesus? No more pain, no more death, no more sorrow. I pray we all end up where Nabil is, with Jesus Christ in His presence, perfected forever, filled with the love of Jesus. Amen, Lord Jesus. And uh, uh, you, you sure we wouldn't want to to end up like like Muhammad said? That's that was my question actually. What an excellent segue into my question. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Beautiful segue. And here's we're gonna get the Arabic expert. Uh, <clears throat> Christian Prince, a Muslim said David Wood and I got refuted because there's an article written by a Muslim polemicist when it says in the Quran that if Muhammad forged something in the name of Allah, then mm -hmm. Allah would <clears throat> would basically cut off his aorta. Now, if I remember yesterday, if I remember. I'm going by memory. He says that the Arabic in the Quran is Watin, but in the Hadith, when Muhammad said, I feel as my aorta being cut off, it's Abhar. It's not the same word, so it doesn't prove our point. That's uh, false. If you, the, if you go to the dictionary, yes. it says exactly the same meaning. Actually, I can I can get the Please. dictionary for you, and Good. I can send it to David. He can, I don't know if he can put it in the screen, so everybody can see that those people, they are just trying to fabricate. Okay. And, uh, uh, and you know the funny when the Muslim they try uh, uh, to uh, to defend to defend their prophet. Uh, if let us say Muhammad, like whatever uh, vein was was cut off, that will not change anything. That Allah is saying it clearly, that if he do something, I'm going to cause his death. This is what it's meant. All right. So when a Muslim he says uh, uh, what he said, let us go to the dictionary first. Yep. This is the link, uh, David. If you like, you can show it in the screen. And this is what the word is used in the hadith. Right. This is an Islamic dictionary. It's in English and in Arabic. So nobody can, you know, uh, can say, well, this is not really uh, true. Mm. I don't know if you can show it in the screen. Yeah, yeah he's, he's getting, getting it. it. Yes, he's going to get it. And this is the dictionary for what word? Christian Prince? Uh, uh, abhar. Oh, abhar. Okay, that's the one in the hadith. Muhammad used Abhar right. in the hadith. Quran yeah. uses Watin. Aisha, she said, Ya Aisha, ma azalu ajidu alam al ta'am alladhi akaltu bi khaybar fa hadha awanun wajatun qita'u abhari min thalika sum. So the word there is Abhar, Abhari, and this is exactly the word you have in the front of you in the screen. Mm -hmm. And so here, when the screen, if it's going to come up, uh, I can read it. It says ventral aorta. Buckled, it uh, comes up, aorta, dex, position, aorta, ascending aorta, aorta. Okay, what about the word watin in the Quran? Here so, we go. I will show the link. Here we go. The same Islamic website. Both are Islamic. History. It's al-watin. That one is al-watin. And the Quran is al-watin. Take a look and you will see al-watin mean the same exactly, the aorta. The, uh, the, uh, the aorta, sorry. Okay, beautiful. Now, guys, did you catch it? Here's the Arabic sp uh, expert. He just gave us two links to the dictionary in Arabic. Watin, the word used in the Quran, and Abhar, the word used in the Hadith, both are synonyms. They refer to the aorta. So when a Muslim says it, because I want to help the non-Arabic speaking Christians, Christians listen to this. When a Muslim says, ah, oh, the Hadith says Abhar, whereas the Quran says Watin, here you have it on the screen. Thank the Lord Jesus for CP and technology. We now have it on the screen. Watin, Abhar are synonyms. They mean the same thing. They aorta. So much for the argument. Christian Prince, I was wondering, do you have a, do you have Jalalain in Arabic? 
Uh, yeah, we can open it. No problem. I just remembered in um, Jella Lane's commentary on uh, 66, uh, I mean, sort of 69 versus um, uh, 44 to 47. Let me see if I have it here. And let me see if I have it in the English. Okay, I'll read it in the English. So this is Tafsir Jala Lane on Surah uh, 69 verses 44 to 46. He says, And had he, namely the prophet, fabricated any lies against us by communicating from us that which we have not said, we would have assuredly seized him, we would have exacted vengeance against him as punishment by the right hand, by our strength and power, then we would have assuredly severed his life artery, the aorta of the heart, a vein that connects with it, and which, if severed, results in that person's death. So I was just wondering what terms he, uh, Jalalain, uh, the two Jalals there, uh, used there, because uh, in the English it's life artery, aorta of the heart, and he says a vein that connects with it. So he's yeah, now, using various yeah. terms there. Yeah, it says niyatul qalb wa huwa ruqun muttasil idhan qata'a ma tasahibuhu. I will translate to English. It is the, the, the vein which is connected to the heart, to the heart, and it is the one, if you cut it off, is going to cut, uh, cut off his life. Okay. And, and uh, uh, this, is a, like, this is only about one verse, that, that al-wateen. Uh, if we want to read more, actually, I, all of them, by the way, say the same, not only this. Tafsir al-Tabari says the same. Ibn Kathir says the same. Uh, 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 Al-Qurtubi uh, Al says the same. All of them, they are saying exactly the same. So when the Muslim, they try to defend, because this is really horrible, they try to fabricate, says this is, is not the same as the other one. In fact, dictionary prove it. Islamic interpretation prove it. It is what is connected to the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and for for, any, for anyone who's who's tuning in right now and you, you haven't seen some of our, our earlier live streams, uh, there's a reason we're talking about this. Um, I've got some old files pulled up that we used in previous live streams. I'm not sure what they are. I'm just judging by around the, the date of the, the file that I pulled up. Let me see what comes up here. I'm hoping it's uh, Surah 69 here. Oh, yeah. There we go. So this is uh, on the screen. This is Surah... 69 of the Quran, uh, verses 44 to 47. And what we have here is Allah saying that if Muhammad had forged a revelation, he would kill him sever by severing his aorta. So let's go ahead and read it. It says, And if he, Muhammad, had forged a false saying concerning us, we surely would have seized him by his right hand, or with power and might, and then we certainly would have cut off his life artery, and uh, uh, the translators add aorta, in parentheses there, and none of you could have withheld us from punishing him. So why is it relevant that Allah says that he's going to kill Muhammad by severing his aorta in uh, in this in these uh, verses? Well, you have Muhammad in, in tons of passages in the Hadith and the Sirah. And uh, let me give you an example right here. This is Sahih al-Bukhari 4428. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died, used to say, O oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Kaibar, and at this time I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. And uh, just so you know, the as if right there is not yeah. in the Arabic. The translators added it. Um, what he actually says is, I feel my aorta being cut from that poison. I feel my aorta being cut from that poison. So uh, the historical background there, why don't you guys give us the uh, historical background? Of uh, of what Muhammad was. Of, yeah. uh, of Why did he say that, CP? Why, what was Muhammad speaking about when he says he feels the effects of the poison from Khaybar? What what is he talking? What's Khaybar? Tell us, CP. What's what what is this Khaybar business? What happened? The the, the poison which he ate in Khaybar. This is what supposedly the women there. But, uh, but before I go to Khaybar, yes. I sent a link, uh, uh, David, mm -hmm. for Kathir in English. So people, they can see this is exactly what it says, even in their English fabrication of Ibn Kathir, because Ibn Kathir in English, by the way, is totally different from Ibn Kathir in Arabic. I sent a link, you can put it in the screen. Now, if we go to the story, when the women, she tried to kill Muhammad, Muhammad, he asked her, why you did that? She said, well, if you are a false prophet, the poison will kill you and will get rid of you. If you are a false prophet and you are just a king, if you are a truly prophet, God will protect you. Muhammad, he said to her, Allah will not allow you to do so, which means Allah protecting me. So this was an examination from the women. If Muhammad is a prophet, he will die. If Muhammad is not, 
he would be saved. Now, all of us, we knew the story, according to Muslims, that the Muslims, they did everything in their hand to save Muhammad. It's not only Allah. I'm sure uh, 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 Sam and David, they knew that when Muhammad get this poison, they cut in his throat, he make a hole so he will bleed. I don't know what they call it in English. You know, uh, so... A, a cauterization, tra cauterization or something? Tracheotomy. Okay, that too. Right. Yeah, like, it's like to, 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 if he bleed, he is going to like lose the poison before yeah. it go all oh, oh, no. yeah, 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 so uh, just, uh, yeah, we, yeah, that's just called like bleeding a wound or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So say, so they did that in order to save Muhammad from his death. But yet neither the Muslims, neither Allah was able, even though Muhammad, he says, Allah will not allow you to do so. So uh, by, by saying such a statement, Muhammad, he made a false prophecy because this is about the future. He don't speak of his own. The Quran says, "Wama huwa illa wahyun yuha." So everything Muhammad he say, it is inspiration from Allah. Wahyun yuha. So when Muhammad he says to this woman that uh, Allah will not allow you, he just told her a prophecy that he is not going to die because of this. Mm -hmm. And this is chapter fifty-three, verse number four. Anything he say is of, uh, from Allah. So when he said that, and then we find that Muhammad he confess that he is dying specifically because of that poison. He's just a proof again that he's a false prophet because the prophecy he made that Allah will not allow this to happen, broken. Number two, proven to us that all the stories of Islam is lie. Why? Because there is a very important question we need to ask ourselves. The Muslims, they say that Allah, he saved Jesus from the Jews. Correct? Yes. So why Allah did not save Muhammad from the Jews? Precisely. Mm -hmm. People may not know the woman that did that was a Jewish woman. So guys, he said woman, but it's a Jewish woman. And CP, what did he do to her that made her want to poison him? Because a lot of people don't know the story of Khaybar. Why did this Jewish woman? He slaughtered He slaughtered Khaybar, you know, and uh, uh, he killed all the men. Uh, uh, and he left only the male who didn't have no uh, growing hair and, uh, and around you, their uh, uh, pubic area. Let me uh, let, let me go ahead and uh, I, I've got Ibn Saad pulled up real quick. This is Ibn Saad, page 252, to give the quotation. Um, the apostle of Allah sent for Zainab bin al-Harith, that's the woman who poisoned him, and said to her, what induced you to do what you have done? She replied, you have done to my people what you have done. You have killed my father, my uncle, and my husband. So I said wow. to myself, if you are a prophet, the foreleg will inform you. And others have said, if you are a king, we will get rid of you. So, uh, yeah, this is this woman's uh, the, the men in this woman's family were slaughtered by Muhammad's followers. Yeah. Now, 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 Sam or, or CP, I just want to ask. Yeah, you asked a question. I was going to. If ask. you, yeah, <laughs> if you if you went and slaughtered all the men in a village, uh, you know, except for the except for the ones you can easily control, uh, if you if you slaughtered all the fighting men in a village, and then uh, one of the women whose family you just slaughtered came up and offered you a delicious meal of your favorite part of the lamb, the foreleg. Um, what's your reaction going to be? You're going to eat it, CP? Well, obviously, Muhammad, he have no, uh, you know, he, he think because uh, people are terrified of him and there's no way this woman, she will commit suicide. So he was a fool when he did it. Obviously, obviously, he was a fool. Secondly, uh, shouldn't Allah inform him before he eat the goat? Number three, the Muslim, they claim that when he ate the goat, uh, one of the companion, he died in the spot. And then the goat spoke to Muhammad saying, don't eat me. But Muhammad ate already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the funny is that after he ate, the goat spoke and the goat have no head. I don't know where the word is coming from, but the goat has no head. It is a cooked goat. And after he ate, looked like Allah, he, uh, he was uh, slow. Or maybe his internet like was... There's a delay. It must be. It's got to be something. Maybe right? he was sleeping, man. Like Baal yeah. was asleep. But obviously, Muslims, they don't think really about what's going on. Because if Muhammad, Allah, he told the goat to speak, so Muhammad will not eat. Shouldn't you ask the goat to speak before he eat? I mean, what the point of speaking after he ate? And now, as you see, Muhammad, he died because of the poison. Mm -hmm. And now the Muslim, they want to say, Muhammad did not die by the poison. That's mean they are saying that our prophet went crazy before he died. Yeah, he's, yeah. Li he's lying. Because he doesn't he's know what he's talking or he's about. He's lying he's crazy. So I want everyone to get it. Let me just recap the what I think is very important to remember. The Muslim objection. Guys, you heard CP, who knows Arabic. It's his mother tongue. They can't pull this on him. They claim in the Hadith, Muhammad uses the word abhar for aorta. The Quran uses watin. 
somehow it doesn't mean the same thing. CP just gave us two links, and Lord willing, they wanted you to share the links in the comments so they can go reference it. The dictionary says, Abhar Watin are simply synonyms referring to the aorta. They mean the same thing. So that argument goes out the window. Muslims, you need to be honest and stop trying to deceive us with your lack of knowledge of Arabic. And now, since we're talking about Muhammad being sexually immoral and a deviant, an agent of Satan, I got another question for you, CP. Hmm. Even though we know that Muhammad at 54 slept with a nine-year-old minor, violated her, and pretty much destroyed her life, physiologically, mentally, I have heard people say, well, that's not an objection we should raise against Muhammad, because at that time, <clears throat> people married young girls, and no one raised this objection against Muhammad. In other words, at the time of Muhammad, nobody complained. No one had a problem with it because it was culturally acceptable to marry young, premature girls. So we shouldn't raise this as an objection. What do you say to that? And what do you say to those people? Because some of them are actually Christians who bring this up. What would you say to them in response to this? Well, isn't it uh, uh, Muhammad when he came uh, uh, to Abu Bakr and he said, I want to uh, I want to have your daughter as a wife. And then Abu Bakr, he said, but you are my brother. Muhammad, he said, you are, I am your brother in the religion and she is mine. Which means Muhammad, he forced Abu Bakr to give his daughter. Secondly, if this is what is the case, why the Muslims don't do today what they used to do before and who is the one who did that before let us say we have more than 80 companion with the prophet name one for me in the time of muhammad he did marry six years old baby girl who abu Bakr, omar ali who hassan hussein uthman none Nobody marry a child except Muhammad. And for sure, Muhammad is the first, and then that we became a sunnah. So now in Yemen, they, they practice this, sadly. But before that, nobody do that. Secondly, I'm sure you know the hadith where uh, uh, a, a guy, his name is Jabir. Jabir, he married a widow, and he was in a rush to go uh, to see his wife. So Muhammad, he noticed that Jabir want to go home so fast, so he said, hey, Jabir, what's, uh, what, what's up? Hmm. He said, oh, Prophet, I'm, you know, I need to go home because I married and I miss my wife. The Prophet, he asked him, did you marry a virgin young or a previously married woman? The guy, he said, a previously married woman. The Prophet said, I'm going to give the hadith to, uh, to David. So if you like, you can share it. And maybe if you can, I don't know if you David, he can zoom on the text because it's so small in the in the YouTube to people for seeing. So you will see Muhammad encouraging the man who is married to a widow, a woman, real woman, to go and get a child. And the purpose is to play with her. Here you see the evil mentality and the evil spirit of a man. What is my business? The guy is happy with his wife. Why you are asking him? Why you don't go and get a child? And what the purpose? Read with me carefully. This is the Muslim translation. Whereupon he said, why? Why don't you marry a young girl, a jariya, so that you could sport with her and she could sport with you? So what the purpose of this relationship? is not marriage. It's just fun right. with a child because you can sport with her and she can sport with you. So here when we see how Muhammad he think and what is his favorite kind of a, a, a female to be in the bed. It's not a woman in the age of Khadija. So obviously Muhammad here, when he married Khadija, who is a previously married to two husbands, is not his favorite choice. Otherwise, why he advised the man who is married to a widow like Khadija, why you marry a widow? Go and marry a, ch a younger child so you can sport with her. So Muhammad, he don't like to really have a, a wife. She is a woman. He like children's. And that is a pure evil. And when they say that in the old days, uh, children, they used to be mature so fast. Well, we have tons of reference saying that Aisha, first time she have her period, it was over the age of 14, mm -hmm. which means more than eight years after the date of her marriage, which means four years before Muhammad died only. And here we ask ourselves, 
if a child have no period, why Muhammad he have a desire for such a child? She is so small. Obviously, Muhammad he have mental illness and he like children's, but for sexual purpose. Pretty so, creepy. So basically, if we have someone saying, well, it was acceptable back then and we shouldn't use this as an objection, what advice would you give that person, especially if they're... Yeah, they have to prove it. The list of Muslims and Arab before Muhammad. Who? His uncle did that? No. His cousin did that? No. They have to give us, you know, who are those who did marry children? We don't find anything. So all of this is fabrication in order. Like, you know, we have a, in history of Europe, some kings, perverted kings, they did that maybe. But this is a perverted kings. So if you are saying your prophet is a perverted king too, mm -hmm. well, we, we agree with you. So when we say mm -hmm. when we say that the prophet, he did. And not only that, the Muslim, they start making uh, fab the fabricated stories that Muhammad, he saw Aisha in his dream. And Allah inspired him to marry Aisha. That's mean Allah is a, is a, is a sick God too. Because what, wh why, why Islam needs six years old girl? I mean, cannot Allah establish his religion without six years old girl? Mm -hmm. Islam will succeed unless we need Aisha. Mm -hmm. That's funny. It's like saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, a Paul cannot be a messenger unless we get him six or six years old wife. Mm. You no, know? this is silly. This is stupid. If this is if, it, if this is a religion from God, it's going to be victorious regardless if we have Aisha or not. All what we need is God. And he's a prophet. And that's it. If God is with me, who could be against me? Yeah. As simple as that. I do not need Aisha. I do not need anyone. But if you notice always Muhammad, he used God as his puppet. If you remember... The fight between Muhammad and his wives. Yes. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many people involved in this fight? Everybody, including Allah, and the angels Jibreel, and all the angels. If if if, if uh, Sam or David, you can read for us, Amazing. chapter 68, 66, verse number four, and you see how Muhammad, how he, you know, the Muslim they say. Do you remember when the Muslim they says that uh, there is a guy, his name George Bernard Shaw. He said if the Prophet he was here he can solve all the problem of the world during the coffee in the morning, which we cannot find in any book of this guy. Yes. It's a fabrication. But look, Muhammad, who can solve all the problems in the world, he cannot solve his problem in the house to the point he needs Jibreel, Allah, and all the angels, and ISIS, and Al-Qaeda, and Al-Zarqawi, and Osama bin Laden, and every fighter, and, and the Mimi Hijab, and all of them to defend him. You want to read the verse? Sure. Chapter 66, verse 4. If you two, and I'm reading Hilali Khan, explains who the two are, um, Aisha and Hafsa, turn in repentance, it will be better for you. Your hearts are indeed so inclined. And they put in parentheses to oppose what the Prophet likes. But if you help one another against him, then verily Allah is his Mawla, and Gabriel, and the righteous among the believers, and furthermore, the angels are his helpers. So Allah, Gabriel, <clears throat> the righteous believers, and the angels will all help Muhammad against Aisha and Hafsa. I, I wanted to uh, I want to give the uh, give a hadith that anyone can look up. Um, just, just keep in mind if you want to. Uh, uh, people were watching. If if you want to look up the hadith, you go to kalamallah.com and you can download uh, all of the top hadith collections as well as several translations of the Quran. There uh, PDF format. Um, and when you do that, go to Sunan An Nasai number thirty four eleven. Gives the historical background from this passage of the Quran. Uh, so, uh, Sunan An-Nasai 3411, it was narrated from Anas that the messenger of Allah had a female slave with whom he had intercourse, but Aisha and Hafsa would not leave him alone until he said that she was forbidden for him. So, Aisha and Hafsa keep bothering him because uh, they, uh, Hafsa caught Muhammad in her bed with this uh, slave girl. And so Aisha and Hafsa wouldn't leave him alone about it. They start harassing him. What are you doing? You're sitting there. You you have sex with all nine or 11 of your wives in one night and we're still not enough for you. You have to, you have to go with your slave girls as well. So they wouldn't leave him alone. And what happened? Then Allah, the mighty and sublime revealed, O prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you? So Muhammad swore an oath that he would stop having sex with his slave girl, and that that was that was going to make his wives happy, but then he came back and said, "Oops, Allah orders me to violate my own oath." 
Mm -hmm. your prophet. That's your prophet, Muslims. By the way, David, mm -hmm. there is not single. There is no single verse in the Quran says that a Muslim can have sex with his slave from gift. The Quran speak about malakat aymanakum, which mean captured in war only. Nowhere to speak about having sex with a slave as a gift. And Mary the Copt was not a captured; she was a gift. So this is a this is a contradiction. Secondly, uh, you know when when the when the, the you remember when the, we, we spoke about before Allah He pray for not to, yes, right? Okay. Now Allah here we have the same problem, but in different way a little bit. It says that if those two females they repent, okay. But if not, then Allah is his protectors. And Jibreel, okay, oh, I want to stop here. Is, is Allah enough to protect Muhammad? Mm -hmm. Obviously not. Exactly. Because Allah is enough, then we do not need Jibreel. If Jibreel is enough, then we do not need the righteous Muslims. If the righteous Muslims is enough, we do not need the rest of the angels. And here you see how silly the structures of the verse, the one who made the verse. If I say, uh, uh, two minutes ago I said, I quote from the Bible, it says, if God is with me, who could be against me, correct? Yep. So if God is with me, who need the angels and who need the, the righteous and who need, that said, God is with me. But look, all what we have here is just a fight between two females. They are not even five foot tall. Hmm. And their husband, who is the biggest terrorist in earth, who he said, that I've been victorious by terror. But look inside the house, Muhammad is a jelly bean. He is the kid who everybody can spank him. Uh -huh. So outside he is a man. Indoor, he need Allah. He need the angels. He need Jibreel. He need every righteous Muslim. He need all the angels, all of this to fight to women. So what kind of a man he is? So he is a failure inside his house. And the, and the funny, the Muslim, they say, the best husband was the prophet. Don't you see? Don't you read? Muhammad, he is asking. Allah himself is involved in order to control the house of Muhammad. It's out of control. Actually, all Muslim source says that there was two parties in the house of Muhammad, Democrat and Republican. Uh, how is that possible, CP? <laughs> what happened? Was, Republican? was Trump there too? <laughs> I too, yeah, and uh, Ivanka. <laughs> uh, uh, what uh, uh, Aisha she was, Ivanka for Muhammad. She was, yeah. Hey, hey, hey check this out, Sam. Uh, Kev yes. here says that you look younger today than than you looked on on the Trinity Channel. Praise Jesus Christ, so, yeah. the Lord. Keep yeah. praying, we, we, pray, guys. I want to just add to that. Do pray for CP, me and David, and our families for our health. That if Jesus tarries, He'll give us long life, healthy life to serve Him, glorify Him, expose Islam, preach Jesus until we die. So praise the Lord Jesus. All right, we have a uh, but we 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 have that Benjamin Button disease. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. Naim here says if the or <laughs> look watch here, CP, you got a Muslim who's going to school you now. If the, the objection. if the aorta is cut, man dies instantly, not three years later. Well, Muhammad was poisoned, and then three years later, he says, "This is the time when it is severed my aorta," and he dies from that. So if you're saying he 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 didn't die from that, you're saying you're calling your prophet a liar. It, it, it shocks me how quickly Muslims will call their own prophet a liar. Muhammad said he was dying from that poison. He described his death as Allah severing his aorta. So if that's what he says, if that's what he says, then who in the name of common sense do you think you are that you can correct your own prophet here? Yeah, he's asking his prophet, uh, David, he's asking his prophet, hey prophet, are you stupid or what? Yeah. How you the poison three years ago, and then after three years after, you say my orta is cutting off. Are you stupid or what? This is what he's saying to Muhammad because uh, Abdul, Abdulism, it is not us who is saying that, it's your prophet. Exactly. So ask this question to your prophet because obviously you are accusing him to be a fool, not us. Yeah, yeah, and that's the best responses you'll get. And usually we have a crowd of Muslims like Abdurrahman. Today he hasn't shown up. I don't know what happened. I guess when he heard your name, he ran to Mecca. And the only thing I've heard so far from the Muslims, Muslims, this is your time to ask your tough objections. You're a liar, CP. You're a liar. So unless you have another objection, I no, want to continue. I, I wanted to uh, read a passage from uh, Abu Dawud so, so, because no, no matter how many times we explain this, Muslims still have a problem understanding uh, basically the, the, the situation here. So this is Sunan Abu Dawud, 4498. A Jewess presented Muhammad at Kaibar, a roasted sheep which she had poisoned. The apostle, of, the apostle of Allah ate of it, and the people also ate. 
He then said, lift your hands from eating, for it has informed me that it is poison. Notice, right before that, it says, so the, the Jewess brought him a poisoned sheep, it says the apostle of Allah ate of it, and the people also ate. So they ate of it. He then said, then what? Then after, after they ate some of it, he then said, lift your hands from eating, for it has informed me that it is poisoned. Bishr died. So he, the prophet, sent for the Jewess and said to her, what motivated you to do the work you have done? She said, if you were a prophet, it would not harm you. But if you were a king, I would rid the people of you. The apostle of Allah then ordered regarding her, and she was killed. He then said about the pain of which he died, I continued to feel pain from the morsel which I had eaten at Kaibar. This is the time when it has cut off my aorta. Look at what he says right there, because then you can understand it. So Muhammad eats some of it, but then spits it out. Bishr dies. Bishr had eaten more of it. Um, so Muhammad got some of it in his mouth. He then said about the pain of which he died. So the pain that he died from. He died in a state of, from, from pain. He says, I continue to feel pain from the morsel which I had eaten at Kaibar. This is the time when it had cut, when it has cut off my aorta. So look at what he says there. Uh, I ate some of it. Then I felt pain. I continued to feel pain. And now is the time when it's cut off my aorta. So Muhammad was in a state of pain, agony, for three years until it finally kills him. What did Muhammad die from? According to Muhammad, he died from the poison. He describes it as Allah severing his aorta. That's exactly the way Allah said he would die um, if he's a false prophet who, do, who invented revelations. Now, the, the reason this is amazing, I, I think you have like 10 different reasons to reject Muhammad as an obvious false prophet here. One, he's so stupid that he ate part of a sheep from a woman uh, who, whose family had just been slaughtered. So she brings it to him. Two, um, you've got you've got Bisher there. Bisher could taste the poison as soon as he as soon as he put it in his mouth, according to Muslim sources. He could taste it, but he said, "Wait, wait Muhammad Muhammad wouldn't eat it. Muhammad wouldn't eat this um, if it were poison. So I'll just keep eating it. I don't want to be gross and, and start spitting out my food." Meanwhile, Bisher dies. Why? Because of his confidence in Muhammad. You've got the woman who says uh, who says, "Hey, if if." Uh, if you're if you're a false prophet, if you're just a king who's who's trying to be a tyrant over us, I'm going to rid the world of you. Muhammad responds by saying, Allah will never allow you to do it. Then then how did Muhammad die? He died of the poisoning. He said Allah wouldn't allow you to do it. And then Muhammad died from the poison anyway, just after three years of horrible agony. And then in, uh, apart, from, apart from all of those things, think about this. Bisher could taste the poison. He could taste it. Wait a minute. Something tastes a little bit off here about this about this sheep. Then Muhammad eats some of it. What does Muhammad say? Does he say, wait a minute, this tastes funny. I taste some poison here. No, he says, I have a revelation, ladies and gentlemen. I have received a revelation. So wait a minute. You're telling me once you put this stuff in your mouth, you can taste poison in it. His, 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 his companion, Bishr, could taste the poison in it. But when Muhammad tastes the poison, he claims that he's getting a revelation that it's poison. How, how much more obvious could he make it that he's a total false prophet who's fabricating revelations, claiming that they're from God when they're, 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 they're things that he picks up along the way? And in addition to all of this, in addition to all of this, he dies this horrible, agonizing death and describes it in the same way that Allah says he'll die in Surah 69 of the Quran. Look at all of these different reasons for, for thinking, wow, this guy is just obviously, obviously, obviously not a true prophet. And this is just one incident. This is one incident out of tons. So, uh, Naeem, I hope I hope this is sinking in at some point. I don't really see a way around this. David, uh, go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Christian Prince. Go ahead. Sorry, there is something we need to add. Mm -hmm. What after death? I sent you a link. Muhammad he claimed he he said that the Muslims pray every Friday because your prayer will be displayed in the front of me. They said to him, "But Prophet, how your our prayer will display in the front of you, and you will be dead." And, you know, he said that Allah forbid it, the earth from consuming the body of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? After Muhammad, he died because of this hadith. Muslim, they believe him that the earth will not, you know, his body will preserve. So there's no need to bury him. So for three days, three nights did not bury Muhammad. But then, surprise, surprise, we find that Muslims in their books saying that the prophet of Allah, he stink as all human beings stink. As an example, 
in the book of al muwatta the imam malik hadith number page number 53 hadith number 83 it says that when the prophet he died ibn al abbas he stood and he said that the prophet he died and he stink the same as all a human being stink so bury him yeah. and then in different hadith let me send you the, the arabic one too so those who speak arabic they will not say we are making things up and this is a sahih hadith uh, this is the arabic for muhammad he stink in different hadith it says that hatta raba batnuhu hatta raba batnuhu what does that mean that muhammad his stomach became you know when when a person he die uh, his stomach grow because he have a gas which is very normal this is not only for uh, i mean we're not making fun of muhammad this is happening for everybody because he have a food in his belly and that food will will be digested by the bacteria and later will make a big big belly until he start farting and this is exactly what happened to muhammad three days in the heat of mecca and this is the other hadith in arabic i'm going to read it and every muslim can read it too in arabic as you see in the front of you where it says that when the prophet إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما مات لم يدفن حتى ربى بطنه ونثنة خنصرا. That the prophet when he would die he was not buried until his belly became so big and his fingers became like the shrink. You know when the dead man you know like. I don't know what the, what the what the word in, in in English like you know when you if you want to like you you want to be like a cat you know how you do your fingers I don't know what to say I don't know what equal a word in English I'm trying to find something like when you want to grab something in your hand uh -huh. this is what clenched happens. right your hands are clenched you mean? exactly so this is exactly what happened to him so he's saying that the prophet was not buried until hatta raba batnuhu wa thana wa and I change any Muslim to say we are making things up. So this is what happened to Muhammad. He stink. His smell is all over. And it says, it says there even there, uh, uh, like uh, there's different hadith, you know, and you mentioned it before, uh, David, that the Muslims, they were fighting about the death of Muhammad. Maybe you can read it for us about he died, he did not die. Uh, Omar al-Khattab, he could not believe it, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then in three days, three nights, they did not bury him. Maybe they thought he is the same as Jesus. Yeah, precisely. That's mm -hmm. what it seems like. By the way, CP, I want to add one thing from the biblical perspective. I want to make sure people, you got it. Guys, heard what he just said. Muhammad said, Allah has forbidden the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. So according to Muhammad, the bodies of the prophets do not decay. God miraculously preserves their bodies to remain incorruptible until the day of resurrection. That's what the Hadith says. Now, just to show you what a obvious false prophet he is, not only did his body start decaying, see if he gave you the sources, he even gave you the Arabic, but let me show you what the Bible says about the bodies of the prophets before Muhammad, specifically Joseph and Elisha. Now, Exodus 13, 19, Exodus 13, 19. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. The reason why he did that, because in Genesis 50, if you read the last chapter of Genesis, Joseph prophesied, Yahweh, Yahovah will visit you in Egypt and bring you out, out of the land of Egypt. And then he made, <clears throat> made them promise, when he does, carry me out of the land and bury me in the land that he's going to give to us. So he made them promise that when God visits them to bring them out of Egypt, they will not leave his remains in Egypt, but take his remains and bury it in the land allotted to his sons, Ephraim, Manasseh. So what did Moses do? He honored that word. So it says, Exodus 13, 19, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the children of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely attend to you, and you shall carry my bones away from here with you. What happened to Joseph's body? Decayed. It's only bones. What about Elisha, the prophet? 2 Kings 13, 20 to 21. So Elisha died and they buried him. Now Moabite raiders would enter the land in the spring. And they were burying a man. They saw raiders. So they threw the man into the tomb of Elisha. Pay attention now. When the man touched the bones of Elisha, he came to life and stood on his feet. So two things. Elisha's body decayed. The only thing remained was his bones. 
and even his bones still had miraculous power by the Spirit to revive a dead body. Muhammad alive couldn't do any miracle. The bones of a true prophet was used by the Spirit to revive a dead body. But here you have two examples, two prophets, their bodies decayed. They were only bones. How much more evidence do you need that this man, Muhammad, was a fraud, an agent of Satan, and Antichrist? And by the way, uh, Sam, there's a Muslim, he says, that you guys are quoting a uh, uh, non-authentic uh, uh, source. So we quote the Quran is not authentic. We quote the Hadith, which is Sahih, is not authentic. And it was, the funny here, by the way, if you are a Muslim and you have source, you call it source, but yet you call it not authentic. I mean, how stupid is that? Hmm. How you make it source, mm -hmm. but yet it's not authentic. How you must then make it source for you, but yet it's not authentic. That's mean you are the one who has the problem, not us. Because you are the one who brought those source. You are the one who print them. You are the one who publish them. You are the one who may spend money on them. And you are the one who teach them in their schools. But just because they are in our channel, they are not authentic. So... Now here we I ask ourselves how we can trust Islam if Muslim themselves they say we have a lot of garbage in our books mm. So how we can follow God who cannot protect his book and there's a lot of a fraud This is what he meant. He said there's a lot of a fraud in Islam in Islamic books exactly. Islamic my friend it cannot trust cannot be trusted. This is what the Muslims are saying to us Islamic books is garbage So how we can know what is right what's true? We, we were not there. We did not attend Muhammad funeral. We did not see Muhammad dying and we did not see Muhammad crying from pain in his in his poison. So all what we have is your source. And then you say to us, our source is a bunch of garbage. Thank you. Nice to meet you, garbage. Yeah, yes. Seriously. I, I mean, uh, you, you've got people like uh, uh, yeah. Imam Bukhari, who literally went through hundreds of thousands of hadiths to get to the most reliable ones. And when we quote those, Muslims say, oh, you're quoting garbage. See, you didn't let me chime in. You didn't understand him. He said, it's probably the English. He didn't say source. He says, you don't have good sauce. What's wrong with you, CP? Your a sauce. sauce is not good. Are you saying the hadith of your prophet is a sauce? <laughs> it's a, making of your prophet you not English. So You're, are you saying, are you saying the Quran we were quoting for you was a sauce? It's so it's, it's like ragu sauce. What's wrong with you? Uh, uh, so from now on, uh, Sam and David, we should not say Quran. We should say we go to chapter 66, 66 in the book of sauce, verse number four. So in the Sahib, in the chapter sixty six of sauce we uh, chili or or uh, not chili i don't know Ch chili sauce chapter 66 verse number four we find that muhammad and his wives are fighting this is the book of sauce according to muslims we are quoting your quran you idiot mm -hmm. this is sauce. <laughs> daif right. brother right. daif. hey, hey here, here's a, here's another example of exactly what we're talking about right now where muhammad's own modern followers uh will, will call the Muslim scholars, the Muslim historians, the biggest bunch of liars the world has ever seen. So this is Dale Lee, Sam's favorite. The, uh, guy again? the life of the messenger of God. What What is that anyway? Is he Sirat Rasulullah, Ibn Ashaq? That's the only it's one not he not an, Yeah, but th this isn't an Ibn Ashaq. So the say? life of the messenger of God records that Aisha accepted Islam shortly after it was revealed, 12 years before her marriage. And there is no way she could have done so as an infant or toddler. Uh, Dale, please give us, please give us a clear reference page number. No offense, but we tend not to trust what you guys say in the no, chat. Especially him. A He's a yeah, notorious especially liar. Especially you. You're a chronic liar. You've been humiliated over and over again. Now, CP. Wait, 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 wait. I got, got I, got, I, 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 I got some references here. Yeah, but I want CP to address this as well as you come up with the references. CP. According uh -huh. to this man, Aisha accepted Islam 12 years before the marriage. That means Aisha could not be six when Muhammad asked Abu Bakr to marry her and nine when he slept with her. This is what this Muslim just said, and he goes, it's in Sirat Rasulullah. Okay, can he give us the book of sauce he is getting this from? Yeah. yeah. He in, said in, Sirat Rasulullah. In the, in the meantime, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for the actual reference, let's look at a couple of passages here, ladies and gentlemen. I'll go through these quickly because we don't want to spend too much time um, on this. But let's go through some passages here. Uh, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, number 5133, narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years. And by the way, look at the chapter heading. The chapter heading is, giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. And then he quotes the Quran, Surah 65, verse 4, to justify... 
um, the marriage. And notice he specifically says in the Idda for the girl before puberty is three months. So he quotes the Quran, which justifies marriage to prepubescent girls, and then gives Aisha as an example. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133. Again, let's read a couple of these real quick. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5134, narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old. Uh, that's that one. Next one. We should go to Ben Kathir. I can, I can, well, if you want to pull, pull right up here. here. Yeah, um, we've got all day long. 51, yeah. let me just read this one and then I, I've got, I've got all of them. I got Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawud, I got them all pulled up. 51, I'm so used to people like Dale Lee lying on here that you just kind of have to have these things ready. 51, 58, Sahih al Bukhari narrated Urwa. The prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years, i.e., until his death. Notice, notice. You have Aisha narrating some of these passages. Dale Lee calls Aisha, the mother of the faithful, a liar. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. He said life of Muhammad, right? Well, I'm going to give him Ibn Kathir. This well, doesn't come from his tafsir. doesn't come. It comes from his Al-Sira al Nabawiya. Al-Sira al Nabawiya translate in English, the life of the prophet Muhammad by Trevor Le Gassik. Everyone pronounce his name. This come, You can get it in English. It's in four volumes. This comes from... <clears throat> Volume 2, English translation of al Sira al Nabawiya, pages 93-94. Ibn Kathir, who had read all the sources before him, because guys, I want you to remember this. Ibn Kathir is coming about 700 years after the death of Muhammad. He's read all these sources. He's read Bukhari. He's read Muslim. He's read Nasai. He's read Ibn Majah. He's read Ibn Hisham. He's read it all. He's a scholar. And he's one of the students of Ibn Taymiyyah. After examining all these sources, Dale Lee, a peon who can't get his facts straight and wouldn't know the truth if it slapped him in the face, says that the life of Muhammad says that she was too young, not too young. She had to be much older than a toddler when Muhammad married her. Let me show you what Ibn Kathir says, who knows Arabic, and this guy doesn't even know English. Watch here. This is what he says. His statement, he contract married with Aisha when she was six. Thereafter, consummating marriage with her when she was nine is not disputed by anyone. Let me repeat it two more times. Is not disputed by anyone. Not by anyone? Is not disputed by anyone. It's, despite, it's disputed by a bunch of people? Is not disputed by anyone. Uh, Dale Lee's disputing it. Is not, but he's, he's not anyone. He's, he's a nobody. He's talking about the scholars, right? And he's talking about, yeah. And then it says, and is well established, well established in the Sahih Collections of tradition elsewhere, which you just quoted several. CP, what do you got to say now, to this now, guy? Do, I just, I just want to add, uh, uh, Ibn Kathir. He knew, he knew the sources far better than, of course, than uh, pretty much uh, anyone before after him, right? I mean, there, there are only a few people who are in that category, but he would have known all of the Sira works, all of the Hadith collections. He knew all of these, and he said it's not disputed by anyone. In fact, you cannot translate the Quran in English without consulting Ibn Kathir's Tafsir first. The commentators that people consult to properly translate the Quran in English, Tabari, Qurtubi, Ibn Kathir, the two Jalals, Baidawi, Zamakshari. You cannot translate the Quran in English and have it accepted by Muslims if you haven't consulted these sources. And many Muslims say one of the greatest, if not the greatest, commentator is Ibn Kathir. CP, what do you got to say? You know, if we quote for this guy from the same book he just quote for us to prove the age of Aisha to be not what we are saying, and it is very embarrassing for Muhammad. He will call the book of Sirah a book of sauce in a second. So he switched. Secondly, now what we find from this, that now Ibn Kathir and Al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and Ibn Majah and all those Sahih books are books of sauce. Mm -hmm. So how we can learn about Islam? Because we find this in the books of the Sahih. That means those books are books of sauce. I send you a link, uh, David. Mm -hmm. This is the imams. They're making fatwa by agreement. Refuting the lies. This is the name of the title in the side. It says refutation of the lie about the prophet uh, 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 Wife Aisha and her age so because many many Muslims they claim that Aisha she was 18 and this is a refutation by the Imams of the Muslims Islam question and answer website and they are saying whoever say that Aisha she was 18 years old when the prophet did marry her he is quoting from the book of sauce you got it. 
It's game over for you, CP. This daily retired you. You need to go find the job now. Okay. Yeah. No, no, we we do we do have a uh, we do have a follow up from from Dale Lee. Oh, um, he said. Um, he said the earliest surviving biography of Muhammad, <laughs> and he, he is he's quoting he's quoting Ibn Ashaq's Ibn Ashaq's Surat Rasulullah. So give us give us the page number. We we want to read this, and th this is just amazing. By the way, Sam, whenever I quote Ibn Ashaq, Muslims say no. Here. Muslims say no. no. You can't trust that. I have it. Let's go. Okay, now I'm gonna bust your lie, Daily. Uh -oh. This is why I say you're just wickedly repulsive. You're a joke, and I keep calling you out to debate. Because you're a kid, I just want to spank you. And, and, and keep in mind why Sam is using strongly. There's a guy who's no. a chronic liar. All he does no, is lie. No, because you should see lies. the comments yeah. he puts in the sections. The guy is repulsive. He's a perfect example of what happens when you follow Muhammad. Dale Lee, I would say shame on you, but you're shameless. You have no honor because you're, you're imitating. You, exactly. So you're intimidating your prophet. He just said life of Muhammad, right? Yep. Folks, right here. Alfred Guillaume's English translation of Sirat Rasulullah, The Life of Muhammad, page 792. In fact, I even, I can have, later on, we can even screenshot and put it. Okay. He said, it doesn't say that. It proves his point. Folks, Life of Muhammad, page 792, to expose this liar. Why is a joke? He married Aisha in Mecca when she was a child of seven and lived with her in Mecca when she was nine or ten. She was the only virgin that he married. Her father, Abu Bakr, married her to him, and the apostle gave her 400 dirhams. He married Aisha in Mecca when she was a child of seven. And when did she live with him in Medina? When she was nine or ten. So why was she living with him? To play patty cake? Patty cake, patty cake with Allah and his messenger. He said life of Muhammad, right? That's what he said. Page 792 of the English translation. So just to be clear, anyone can go online right now, get the PDF of the life of Muhammad. Go to page 792 and read right what you put right there, right? Yeah, exactly. Wow. The writer. Wow. And that that's... The <laughs> Guys, think about the logic here, right? Liar, think bro. about the logic here, right? When I quote Ibn Asak because of the battles and so on, all the horrible information of the satanic verses, when I quote Ibn Asak, Muslims say, no, you can't quote Ibn Asak. That's Sirah. We don't trust Sirah anymore. We only trust the, the, the main collections of hadiths. We only trust Bukhari and Muslim and so on. So notice right here, we're quoting Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, uh, Sunan Abu Dawud, these are the sources that say that Muhammad had sex with Aisha when she was nine years old. And what's the response? No, you can't go to those sources. Those are all lies. What you need to do is go to the Sirah. You have to go to Ibn Asak. And that's what Dale Lee says. Go to Ibn Asak. And Sam quotes Ibn Asak. And what, what, <laughs> what's it say? It says she was nine years old. Wow. This is, this is Islamic apologetics. Yep. Uh, hey, I had, I had a quick one real quick and then we can move on. But there's yeah. a, this is a little side note. Uh, said, do you guys have any easily quotable sources for the claim that there were Jews before and around the time of Christ who believed God was multi-personal? Friend asked for a, for a source. Uh, go to the playlist on my channel um, on the Trinity in Jewish and Christian scripture in video one, not the introduction, but the, the first video, Anthony Rogers goes through a number of uh, Jewish targums. These were, um, these were sort of paraphrases of the Old Testament set into uh, Aramaic and so on. And so he qu he quotes these, he quotes these, and you see they clearly, they clearly, uh, they clearly believe this. And by the way, this is not really disputed, right? No, exactly. There's no dispute. But now he mentions Tabari to prove his case. Can I embarrass him? Yeah. Okay, wait, Sorry, wait, 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 wait. Can let, I embarrass let, him let, a little let, more? Let, 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 oh, please, please, please. This is hilarious. This is some hilarious stuff. Yeah. He, he's going, he's going. Yeah. <laughs> what Dale Lee is doing, what Daly is doing is, uh, we know what he's doing, right? He's going like to lame Muslim yes. apologetics websites. Um, <laughs> yeah, and when you're ready, I have to. Yeah, he's going to, guys, we know, what, we know what happens here, right? Because there are Muslim websites that want to calm Muslims down because Muslims hear this. Wait, Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl? Oh my goodness, is this true? And Muslim apologists understand that that Muslims are very embarrassed by this, and and they start doubting that Muhammad's a true prophet because they they know that this is wrong, that he shouldn't do this. And then so you got these lame websites that will sit there and say, "Oh, you know, in Ibn Asak it says that she was much older, and in the history of At Tabari it says that she was much older." And then Muslims go, "Oh, thank you. Now I don't have to read those sources. I'll just trust what you're saying on your website," not realizing. They're dealing with complete total liars who will right. say anything to keep to keep Muslims in a state of ignorance. This only works with people who haven't read the sources. If they're dealing with people who have actually read the sources, let's read the comment real quick. Aisha was married in 622 
And although her exact birthday is unknown, <laughs> he goes to Al-Tabari. Tabari recorded that it happened before Islam was revealed in 6 10. So her birthday was before 610, Sam. He's quoting Tabari yeah. for this. Okay. So if I didn't, if, if we didn't know what Tabari said, we would say, bam, slam dunk case. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah. What now, happens if we CP, actually read Sorry Tabari? to delay this, but we got to expose this clown so we don't take him seriously. I want to give you it's the funny. references. I'm going to quote the relevant ones because I got tons of quotes in my paper, which we'll link to from uh, Tabari. This comes from, right, just remember these, History of El Tabari, <clears throat> volume 7, pages 6 to 7. Okay, History of Al-Tabari, Volume 9, pages 129 to 130. History of Al-Tabari, Volume 9, pages 130 to 131. Okay, look how many references. History of Al-Tabari, Volume 39, pages 170 and 173. I'm going to read just some of them. The Prophet married Aisha in Shawwal in the 10th year after the beginning of his prophethood, three years before immigration. Okay, three years before immigration. He consummated the marriage in Shawwal eight months after immigration. On the day he consummated the marriage, she was nine years old. Wait, wait, wait. No, you, you can't quote Bukhari. We're talking about Al-Tabari. What does Al-Tabari say? Al-Tabari. On the day he consummated the marriage with her, she was nine years old. Nine years old. Now, let me read another one. Aisha states, we came to Medina and Abu Bakr took up quarters in Al-Sun among the Banu Al-Harith bin Al-Khazraj. The Messenger of God came to our house and men and women of the Ansar gathered around him. My, uh, because I want to read this because look how young she was. My mother came to him while I was being swung on a swing between two branches and got me down. Jumaima, my nurse, took over. So she was saying she had a nurse. Okay, pay attention to that. And wiped my face with some water and started leading me. When I was at the door, she stopped so I could catch my breath. I was then brought in when the messenger of God was sitting on a bed in our house. My mother made me sit on his lap and said, These are your relatives. May God bless you with them and bless them with you. Then the man and woman got up and left. Now watch this. The messenger of God consummated his marriage with me in my house when I was nine years old. The messenger of God consummated his marriage with me in my house when I was nine years old. Now, this is just two of the several that I quoted from the various volumes of Tariq Al-Tabari, the history of Al-Tabari. Do you, do you see why I said this guy's a joke? Don't take him seriously. He makes even Muhammad look righteous. What about the dolls, uh, uh, Sam? Do you have some reference about the dolls? Aisha playing with dolls? Because obviously, yes. mm -hmm. Aisha, yeah. she is a very old woman, but she is playing with dolls. Right obviously, here. she has been with then. Yeah, you want me to read it, Sivir? Well, go ahead if you know okay. them already. Here it is, Sahih Muslim, book 8, number 3311. Sahih Muslim, book 8, number 3311. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was 7 years old, and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was 9, and her dolls were with her. <laughs> Sorry to delay this, CP, but this liar has to be exposed because he has no honor. Yeah, I think, uh, guys... Uh... Should we be just be done with Dale Lee? Yes. Because every, I mean, what has he said that has been accurate? Every single comment uh, that he's gone through, we put up on the screen, and every single comment was a total lie. So basically, when you're dealing with people who are just compulsive liars, then it, it, it's kind of an awkward situation because what do you do, right? You can either ignore them, in which case they're posting lies over in the chat all day long, or you respond to them, in which case they take up all your time because you have to keep exposing them as a liar. Um, or you have to just say tick-tock time to block. Those are the options. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> so we're going to be done with Dale Lee yes. until he learns to show some level of integrity. Uh, Christian Prince, can you read the? Uh, can you see the comment I put up on the screen? Uh, this guy is a joke. You know, I know him. His name is Abbas. He's a potato. He's a sauce. Guy from uh, Speaker's Corner. Is, is he is he serious or is he joking? Oh, a speaker, and he is from the corner, but he's not a speaker. He's an idiot. Just ignore him. This is this guy is a kid. Yeah. He says things. What uh, at ten? To, where where you got this ten? It says there, and she is in the age of six years. Man, so I, need to read. I mean, this guy is, is mentally ill. Just ignore him. Just, so, so, not, so 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 let me get this straight. Um, in every in every hadith that we we yeah. have here, talking about Aisha being either six or seven when the marriage contract was written. And nine years old when Muhammad, in his 50s, climbed on top of her. And then being very specific, right, that 
she was nine and then he lived nine years and he died when she was 18, right? They're giving us an entire timeline. You're saying, oopsie, in every last one of these hadiths, they forgot to add 10 to it. By the way, serious? just to confirm what he's saying, well, I'm going to post the link to the article, Lord Jesus willing later. I'm going to run down the names. So I'm not going to read them. Look how many sources. But these, all these Muslims were idiots. They needed Dale Lee and Muslim Popper to show up to correct them. Notice how many sources. Al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Abu Dawood, Nasai, <clears throat> Ibn Majah, Ibn Asham, Al-Tabari. Not even done yet. Let me get there because look at it. Ibn Kathir. Count, guys. Ibn Qayyim, another student of, of uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. A modern Muslim convert who wrote an English biography on Muhammad, Martin Lings, he's since deceased. Another modern Muslim, Sayyaf ur Rahman al Mubarak Puri. Okay, that's some of the many sources, but what these guys are telling us the Muslims of the past and the Muslims of the present, bunch of idiots and clowns. 14 centuries, they didn't realize idiots. You just have to add 10. That's it. Uh, uh, you know, David, why you don't vote for them again, please? That The article I sent you, it says refutation to the lies. Those are Muslims. Muslims saying to the Muslims that those who say so, they are liars. The Muslims saying that, not us. The article is there, and it's written by scholars of today, yes. not 14 centuries ago. So look at this, guys. We have Muslims who they are ashamed of their prophet. This is, a good, this is a very good sign, by the way. You see, we Christian, we will never be ashamed of something Jesus the Christ, our Lord, did. We agree with what he did. We agree with what he said. We agree with every letter in the Bible. Muslims don't because they feel the shame, the humiliation. So they try to cover up. And this is a clear sign that Muhammad is a creator of Abdulism. Abdulism is mean what? Abdul and he is a slave and the slave he have no right to think he have just no right except to obey Ab Abdulism is a person he is not allowed to think not allowed to 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 dishonor his prophet even if he have to lie and this is what we have today they cannot no. um, they are ashamed of their prophet Muhammad having sex with a doll Muhammad having sex what about Muhammad imagine himself having sex but in fact he was not Mm -hmm. What we would this one forget about Aisha that means Muhammad and the Muslim in the hadith They say the Prophet was bewitched and even this guy who put the comment there He agreed that his prophet was bewitched. So the bewitched prophet is trustworthy for you And he is a prophet mm -hmm. If This is the case that means you are an Abdulist who believe in a bewitched prophet and we will never accept a bewitched man To be a person to tell us yesterday an angel. He squeezed me three times that happened only for mayonnaise, ketchup, but not for a prophet. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Thing. And, uh, and by the way, everyone, not notice what this uh, this article is responding to. It's uh, it's responding to a, a newspaper article entitled "Young Journalist Corrects a Thousand Year Old Mistake of Leading Scholars." Okay. Yeah. And by the way, this is the Salafi website, IslamQA.com, yeah. but they're not the only ones. Guys, I'll put the links to this one and a link by a Sufi Muslim who was a Maronite Catholic converted to Islam. His name is Sheikh Jibril Fuad Haddad. He wrote a devastating refutation to a moderate Muslim who tried to argue that Aisha was a nine and obliterated his arguments. And this was a Muslim name. Sheikh Jibril Fuad Haddad. So this is a Salafi website, Islam QA. I'll link to it and I'll link to Sheikh, Sheikh Jibril, Lord willing later. The Muslims are refuting them. And for the, uh, for every one of you, look for Yasir Qadi. I mentioned Yasir Qadi because many of you have heard of Yasir Qadi. Yasir Qadi, he has a lecture, a series of lectures on the mother of the believers. He's done three parts on Aisha. In the last part, he devotes an entire section to refute the arguments showing Aisha was older than nine, that she was 18. He refutes them. Yasser Qadi. This is not a, our debate. It's your debate. Yep. All right, check this out. Uh, we have devout Muslim here. Again? Spreading lies, as always. Oh, gosh. Wow. Right. This is what he does. <laughs> right away, coward. You said he didn't see it. Ha ha. Mary was 12 when she married Joseph. Didn't Isaac marry Rebecca when she was three years old? No. No, he didn't. 
What? Can I answer this, David? Can I answer yeah. this one about, yes. about Mary? Don't Just to show you how we stupid the one who wrote this question. Because, I mean, who, he came with it. Because the Muslim agree that Mary, she gave birth to Jesus and she was a virgin. Hmm. So yeah. how she can give birth if she is a child, you idiot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and on top of that, though, see if you don't forget, she was mature enough to understand what the angel was telling her because she goes, how can I have a son seeing I have been chaste I've been chased. I'm not unchaste, and I, I'm not married. So she understood, let us, right? Let us go with the Abdul. As long as Jesus is a son of a virgin, let us say she was one day old. So what marriage? In the Quran, there's no marriage. In the whole Quran, Mary, she never get married from any person. Precisely. And her name is still virgin even after that. So how the Muslim, he come with such a question? Obviously, they don't believe in their Quran. Because the second you say that Mary, she knew no man, and that's what the Quran is saying, that means you cannot say that she married from Joseph. Because that would be a mistake in the Quran. Because the Quran never mentions such an important story. Secondly, as long as the Quran and the Bible mention that Mary, she gave birth to Jesus without knowing a man, then you have to shut up. Precisely. That's mean clearly that there is no sexual relationship in this until this point where Jesus is born. So that is a false, stupid argument. Yeah. Secondly, if you want to bring us something against uh, 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 about about Mary, will bring it to us from the Bible, not from an article. Then same they they quote about who Isaac? Isaac and Rebecca was three years old when Isaac married her. She was three. CP. This is always a fabrication. Of course. Yeah, so uh, um, we're, we're going to give you an opportunity here. Parliament Post, you've made a claim about Mary saying she was a specific age, 12 years old. Um, i got a Bible right here. Give us chapter and verse so we can see how old Mary was. And you've made a specific claim about Rebecca that she was three years old. Now, this is just amazing because if you read, I mean, she's tra she, she's taking care of the, <laughs> the family animals and so on. Um, when we first read about her, and this is just amazing if she's a little toddler walking around taking care of the taking care of the family farm, taking care of the family livestock. Drawing so, water out of a well. Yeah, so go ahead and give us chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. We'll wait patiently here. You've made two claims. Back them up. Give us give us the source. And don't don't give us some lame Muslim website that says it. Give us. Yeah. It's very simple. Here, here we go. Chapter verse. We'll yeah. quote it. But what does it tell you? And I want to get back to CP. I got questions about Muhammad's morality. What does it tell you that Muslims have to resort to such lies, <clears throat> such distortions, <clears throat> such deceitful tactics? What does it say about this religion that produces these kind of people that have no shame in lying, <clears throat> perverting yeah, sources, misquoting? I mean, what does it tell you about the spirit of this religion? And, and they don't care if they get exposed, right? There's no shame in it, right? Yeah. We'll say something that is absolutely true. We'll put the we'll put the source up on the screen. Dale Lee will say, no, that's a lie, because in this source, it says the opposite. You'll go to the source that he's quoting, show that he's lying. And then he'll say, well, it's in this other source. You know, it's in this other source. Then you'll quote that source to show that he's again lying. And it just doesn't matter to them. Right. And here you have here. We quote something. We quote your most trusted, reliable sources about your prophet and his child bride. And your response is, well, I will lie about Mary. We, we, we respect Mary. We do. But we're going to make stuff up about her. We're going to lie about her. That, that's just what we do. We're going to lie about her, even though we respect her. And we're going to lie about Isaac and Rebecca, even though we claim to respect the prophets. This is just, just how we roll. What is up with this religion, ladies and gentlemen? What is up with a religion where... People on one side are doing everything they can. Notice, whether we're talking about Christianity or whether we're talking about Islam, we, we're giving you the sources. We're showing that we're telling the truth. You've got the Muslims in the chat, and whether they're talking about Christianity or they're talking about Islam, whether they're talking about the Quran and the Hadith or whether they're talking about the Bible, they lie and lie and lie and lie and lie, and they claim that we need to convert to their religion because it's the religion of truth. Why does the truth need such lies to defend it? I would like to know. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, while, while we're waiting for that, we actually yeah. have a. Okay. You want to respond to this one real quick? Oh, you're kidding me. What? Okay. This, this, I mean, this no, I'm one. saying this guy really asked that question. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm shocked. He really thinks the apostles did not worship Jesus Christ. So uh, Masawa uh, Barksai says, "Why did the apostles not worship Jesus?" That okay. is a good question, Sam. Why do we never, ever, ever read? about the apostles of Jesus worshiping him. I okay. mean, if he's walking around claiming to be God or the son of God or whatever and performing miracles to back up what he says, 
why in the name of common sense wouldn't these guys be worshiping not worshiping him not once okay so you ready i'm just going to give you a few verses and then we got to get back to muhammad yes we're going to look how they try to distract okay he said the apostles did not worship jesus christ okay i'm just going to give you a few verses but i also want to get the new the old testament passages ready to uh, i don't know what to say man but anyway okay here we go you ready matthew 14:33 he said the apostles. Okay, let me quote. Matthew 14, 33. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. First example. Matthew 14, 33. Jesus walks on the water, commands Peter to walk on the water. Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus, sinks, and then Jesus saves him because he says, Lord, saves me, which is the way the Old Testament saints would call out to Yahweh to save them. He saves them. And then he stills the waves and the winds, which they knew was something only God does in the Old Testament. What's their response? Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Matthew 28, 9, resurrection appearance, the first Easter Sunday. As they went to tell his disciples, suddenly Jesus met them, the women, saying, Greetings. They came, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Second example, Matthew 28, 16 to 17. Jesus appears to the eleven disciples with others present. Then the eleven disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Okay, now, <clears throat> Acts 7, 59-60. Folks, I want you to see how Stephen, the first Christian martyr, the first Christian martyr, worshipped Jesus. He's about to die. Now, folks, we know that when death comes knocking at our door, the first one we call to at the face of death, in fact, the only one we'll call to is our God. Because when death comes, we cry to the one who has power over death, which is God. Now notice what Stephen does in Acts 7, 59 and 60. He's a Jew now. They stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, praying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Did you catch it? At the moment of death, the God that he cries out to, and he's a Jew, is the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against me, having sinned against them. I'm sorry. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Notice two things. When he's about to die, he entrusts his spirit to Jesus. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord Jesus, don't hold this sin against them who are murdering me. Forgive them. Stephen prays to Jesus the way the Old Testament saints prayed to Yahweh. How do I know? Psalm 31 verse 5. Psalm 31, verse 5, there we are told that it is God who receives our spirits. Because the psalmist says, into your hands I commit my spirit, <clears throat> God of truth. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And yet here, Stephen commits his spirit to Jesus. And then one final example, I can give you many. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. Paul, to all the Christians, and he's writing around 55 AD, within 20 years of the resurrection of our Lord. To the church of God, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are set apart in union with Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who, on, who in every place, notice this characterizes all Christians. This is a practice that defined them and characterized them. Not some, but all Christians did this. With all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both their Lord and ours. Calling on the name of Jesus Christ is an act of worship because to call on someone's name in light of the Old Testament is something you do only to God. You only call on God's name because calling on His name means that you're praying to Him. You're invoking Him. You're asking Him to answer your prayers and you're praising Him. And how do I know this is a worship given to God alone? Psalm 99, 6-7 for the sake of time. Psalm 99, verses 6-7. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Even Samuel was among them who called upon his name. His name. Not the name of Baal. Not the name of any other God. Not the name of Gabriel or Michael. Call on the name of Yahovah. They called upon Yahweh, Yahovah, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the ordinance that he gave them. So notice, the first Christians who were pri primarily Jews called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stephen says to Jesus, Lord Jesus, into your hands I commit my spirit, receive my spirit. Lord Jesus, forgive those who are killing me. Don't hold the sin against them. And then what did the disciples do when they saw Jesus? Worshipped him. And you're telling me the apostles didn't worship Jesus? 
Okay. Um, just wanted to point out a comment, and then we'll turn it over to CP. Uh, Congressman here says, this is Parliament Post. He says it to Act 17 Apologetics. That's me. He says, this is Parliament Post. You are a coward. You blocked me, then asked me for sources. Is this how you operate deceiving people? Well, Sorry, delicate. sport. That's I didn't good. block you. One of the moderators, one of the moderators obviously blocked you. I didn't block oh, you. Awesome. But uh, let's face it. There is no scenario where you could give us a reference for this. There is no source saying that you can't give us a source saying that uh, Rebecca was three years old when she married yeah, Isaac. You're a joke. You, you, you can't give us a source that Mary was 12 years old. There, there is no source. I mean, you could quote some later person who, who made the claim, but you can quote people who made all kinds of claims. We're talking about actual authoritative sources, right? When we when we quote Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, we're quoting your we're quoting your most trusted sources, right? We ask you for what your sources are. You have none. That's just a fact. So, uh, so look, you're, you're saying I'm a you're, you're saying I'm a coward. You're a liar. You're Actually, a liar. You make was, things up. David, but, how how he was blocked and he can post what he just posted to you. He said he, he, he came under he, another name. He posted CB. it under another name. So one of the one of the moderators blocked him. Uh, he came under another name, and instead of coming under another name and giving us the sources that we asked for, he says he's a cow. He says we're uh, we're cowards and and doesn't no, no, bother no. to give us the sources. Well, he went for thirty minutes and he came back after. Still, we have no sources. Let me tell you something. My mom, she gave birth to me when she was two hours old, hmm. and my dad, he did marry my mom before she get married, but before she was born. It's a claim. And this is your prophet, 600 years after Jesus, coming to tell us about Jesus. I mean, how silly are you? You Muslim, you say, we don't accept the book of John. We don't accept the book of Luke. We don't accept the book of Mark. Why? Because it came 60 years after Jesus. It came 90 years after Jesus. But you accept a book which came 600 years after Jesus from a person who never met Jesus, never saw Jesus. He don't even know how to say the name Jesus. And yet, that is a source for you. And I have a bad news for you. You say, we Christian, we should not worship Jesus. The Quran says so. Because he is the word of God. And the word of God is not created. Exactly. And the word of God is holy. And even the Quran says he is his word and he is his spirit. And if we ask anyone from the Abdulism religion, who is the father of Jesus? They will say to us, he is the same as Adam. Are you a fool? Adam is not born, you idiot, to have a father. Those who they are born, they can have a father. So Jesus, the one who is born, who is his father? Okay. Mute, no answer. Okay, let us re rephrase the question. Who is the one who made Mary have a child? Allah. So who is the father of Jesus? Mute. The one who made my mother have me is my father. This is the logic. This is your logic. Even the Quran says, Call them by the names of their father. Your Quran saying that. So who is the father of Jesus? How we can call him now? The son of who? The son of Mary? That is not acceptable. Because even in your religion, you are not allowed to call a man by the, the name of his mother. You call him by the name of his father. So who is the father of Jesus? And if Jesus have no father, why? You will tell me the same, Adam, this is a stupid because Adam is not born again. The Quran says that the similarity of Jesus is the same as Adam. Allah says to him, be and he was. And this is how stupid the author of the Quran. Because Jesus, neither Adam, Allah, he said to them, be and he was. According to the Quran, Allah, he created Adam by making first the mud. And then he fashioned the mud. And then after he fashioned the mud, then he breathed into the mud. So where Allah, he created Adam by saying, be. Exactly. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> this, is, this is the most silly cult ever. All their excuses is silly and stupid. Jesus was not created by saying, be in the Quran, because Allah, he breathed into Mary private part and the verses in front of us. Allah did not create Adam by saying, be, and he was. Allah, he fashioned mud. And after, not only he made mud, and then he fashioned it, and then he breathed into it. And then after that, it took time to the point, uh, uh, Adam, he says to Allah, the verse in the Quran says, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولَ Which means the, 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 the human was ever hasty. If you go to read the interpretation in the Mikathir, you see that uh, uh, Adam, when Allah, he breathed into him after he fashioned him, 
Adam, his, the spirit was going through his body and he wanted to move. So he could not. So he said to Allah, finish me before the sin set Allah. So as you see, even the creation process is taking too, time, too much time to the point Adam, he was worried he will miss the movie. Yeah. yeah. And to confirm one point, CP, the Quran says, let me read it, 3875. Allah didn't create Adam by his word be, like you said, from mud. But watch, watch this. And you know this. It's for the non, for the non Muslims. 3875. He said, Oh, Iblis, this Allah talking to Satan, why don't you worship Adam? What hinders you from worshiping before that which I've created with both my hands? Both my hands I use to create Adam. Why aren't you worshiping him? Are you too proud? Are you of the ex highly exalted? The ones who exalt themselves. So even here it says Allah created him by his hands from mud. Where's the bee? You got it. So um, no more questions because we can. I, I, I got a comment All from right. uh, Sam Hoda here, uh, and people are people are putting uh, going uh, just at giving him the question mark here. He says since Isaac was forty when he re when he married Rebecca, Rebecca would be three when the marriage took place because forty minus thirty seven equals three. Uh, give us the source for all the numbers here. What, 40, 30, Sam, 70? I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, but... so I mean, I, I mean, if you're just gonna say, if you're just gonna say numbers, you can, you can say that. Give us the source. I don't get it. How did? Oh, he oh I, I get it. He's saying, he's saying that, uh, that somehow. Um, so Isaac was forty, and then he gives us the number thirty-seven. Give us the number thirty-seven, yeah, so that we saying. can understand where, where you're subjecting. 37? That's what that's what I'm asking. I, I don't get this guy. You you just came up with forty and thirty-seven. And yeah, I mean you could have you could have said she's one. You could said oh you, she must have been one because forty minus thirty-nine is one, right? Give, well, give yeah. us the source of the number. Yeah. Anyway, that just tells you how desperate they are. If there's no serious question, CP, we're going to continue with the sexual immorality deviancy of Muhammad because here's what I want to ask you. The, we know in the Quran, it talks about Muhammad taking Zayd's wife, but we're told by the Muslims that the claim that Zayd left Zainab because Muhammad lusted after her, those are fabricated stories. It's daif. What do you say about that, CP? Well, the Quran itself is saying clearly that uh, uh, Muhammad first is a liar. If you read the verse, uh, uh, Sam, what the verse is saying? Read the verse for us. Uh, yeah, let me get it. It's 33, yeah. 37. Let me read it. 33, 37. Here goes. I'm going to read in English. And when you said unto him, on whom Allah had conferred favor, hmm. and you had conferred favor, keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah. And you did hide in your heart that which Allah was to bring to light. And you did fear mankind, whereas Allah had a better right that you should fear him. So when Zayd had performed the necessary formality from her, we gave her unto you in marriage so that from now on there, be, there may be no sin for believers in respect of wives of their adopted sons. When the latter have performed the necessary formal formality, meaning divorce them, the commandment of Allah must be fulfilled. Hmm. Do you notice there it says, وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَاللَّهُ مُبْدِيهِ So what the verse is saying to us, many things that Muhammad is a fraud because Allah is saying to Muhammad not me remember Muslim this is the verse in the Quran saying Allah is saying to Muhammad why you are hiding hiding what hiding what Allah told you hmm? and hiding what is inside you hiding what is in your heart toward who toward this woman you are afraid from the people and Allah is the one you should fear so in this moment Muhammad Obviously is a fraud and Allah is spanking him for he is being a liar because he said to Zaid Oh, keep your wife for you. Keep your wife for you. So Allah said to him. Hey liar Scam Why you are being dishonest? You want the women you are dying and look at this Muhammad if you read the tafsir you see that Muhammad he just went to the house He flirted with the wife. He said to her praise be to Allah the one who flipped my heart for you and when the husband come to talk to him he said, keep your wife, man. Keep your wife, please. No, keep your wife, please. This is the double standard of a fraud. With the wife, he flirt. With the husband, he says to him, keep your wife as if he don't care. What do you want more approval from the Quran and from your books that Muhammad is a fraud? What kind of dignity? Even Allah is saying to him, why you are you hiding? So Muhammad is hiding. By hiding, he's doing what? He's lying because he just told the man, Keep your wife to you, but Muhammad, he want her. And then 
just to show you how savage this cult is, it says, "Falamma qada Zaydun minha watara." Watara, when Zainab he finished his needs, sexual needs, he's done. So Muhammad is taking the left over. Muhammad is taking the left over of Zaid. Is that the most honorable man for you that he is taking a woman who Zaid qada minha watara? which mean he got his sexual urge from her and he is not in need for her no more. That is the honorable prophet of Allah. In the top of that, when your book says that Muhammad, he went to the house of Zayd and he found Zainab standing and she was white and fat. And by the way, I'm not making fun with the word fat. This is what it says in Arabic, Jasima. So she is big and fat because in the old days, Arab, they love women who they are big and fat. So if you are skinny, that's mean you are sick. Fat women, big women, that's mean they will give healthy babies. This is how they see it. This is why in Arabic we have song says that this woman, she was so beautiful to the point the camel could not carry her. So Muhammad, he saw her standing in her house. She is almost naked and he flirted with her. Question. Muhammad, the decent man, and by the way, if you want to say to me that this is a false source, etc., go and read your Islamic interpretation and tell them that this is false source. This is not our source in any way, in any way, in any mean. This is your source, uh, sorry, your sauce, your sauce, your uh, chili sauce. So how you can say Muhammad was a decent man if the God of, of, of Islam is encouraging a, a, a prophet to take the wife of somebody? Remember, Sam, when Allah, he said that verse, Zainab, she was still the wife of the man, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you think it's a decent? I ask anyone. Do you think it's decent from a from God to say to any man, why you are hiding your desire for this woman who is married at that moment? Is that what God do? Not the the God revealed in Jesus Christ. Jesus says that if you lust for a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery, and then if a man divorces a woman other for, other than for sexual morality and someone marries her, they end up becoming adulterers and adulteresses in the sight of the true God. So according to Jesus, Muhammad's God is an adulteress-making God. He makes people into adulterers and adulteresses. That means Muhammad's God is Satan. So, uh, Sam, isn't it Muslim to say, how in the Bible it says that David, he commits sin yeah. by taking the wife of somebody? They mentioned it yesterday, Dale Lee, the one that we had to scold. Oh, see, David committed adultery and murdered the man. He mentioned but it yesterday. And by the way, this is what the Muslim believe in their books too. And their prophet, he mentioned that in the hadith too. So now, if David was bad for the Muslim for doing that, how Allah, and remember, there's a huge difference. In the Bible, you will see that God did not say to David, go and do that. Exactly. David cried asking God for forgiveness. David was committing sin. It's not what God told him. Here we see that Allah is asking Muhammad to do that. Exactly. Oh. There, there yeah. are these, uh, go ahead, CP. I'm sorry. I thought you stopped. No, we cannot compare. I mean, because two different cases. I can commit right, right now, but you cannot say to me, okay, well, G the Christian prince is Jesus. I am no one. I am just a, a person. I commit sin. This is not what Jesus told me. If I do what Jesus told me, then you can blame Jesus for what I did because I'm following his steps. But if Jesus never said to me, go and commit sin like that, then you blame me only. And this is the case of David. If David, he do something wrong, we blame David. And here, by the way, this is a proof that, that the honesty of the Bible, why the Jews did not hide what David did. If they are people of corruption, why did not take it off? And then nobody will know about it. That's it. People will forget about it. But this is, this is a proof again that the Jews, they were very serious in the book and they will never take a letter, even if it is will dishonor somehow the most important man in their history which, as a king. His name is David. Exactly. And the, just to add to what you said, two things I want to add. Not only did, uh, did this, the Bible expose David's sin, and that shows God rebuked him and chastened him and shamed him, but then David wrote Psalm 51. Christians don't understand how amazing our God is and how real our God is, and that the Bible does not make man more than he is, even the greatest of saints. The only perfect human life was Jesus our Lord, because he's God in the flesh. David wrote Psalm 51, a psalm acknowledging his adultery and his murder and his confession and repentance, but people don't realize 
Psalm 50, 51 is a psalm that the people with the priests would sing in the temple because the psalms were the hymn book of the priests in the temple. And Solomon was the one commissioned to build the temple, which means Solomon, who is the son of David and Bathsheba, the two who committed adultery and then murdered Bathsheba's husband Uriah to cover up the sin. They had Solomon from that relationship. Solomon would have to, have to be there listening to the people of God recite Psalm 51, a reminder of what his parents did and sinning against God, committing adultery, and then David, his father, murdering a man and God disciplining them severely. Solomon had to be privy to that because he had to hear this psalm worship and he could do nothing about it, showing you God is impartial. The Lord chastens and disciplines people whom he loves. So I want that point. And this one, I want it to sink in for the non-Muslims. Christians, I want you to understand how wicked and evil this act of Muhammad was in taking his adopted son's wife. Here's why. I want it to sink in. Here's why. Z Zayed, obviously, he, he was intimate with Zainab. He slept with her, had sex with her. Now, here is where it gets really sick. Chapter 33, verse 6 of the Quran. And I'm not saying it's for David or CP. They know this. It's for you Christians. And hopefully you Muslims will be embarrassed by this. Chapter 33, verse 6 says this. The prophet, 33, 6. So it's verse 6. The prophet is closer to the believers than themselves. And his wives, pay attention, are their mothers. Understand what this passage is saying. All of Muhammad's wives are the mothers of believers. So can you imagine Zayed? He, he used to sleep with this woman, Zainab, saw her naked. He slept with her. I don't, I'm not going to say defiled her because marriage, intimacy is not defiling in marriage. And now this woman that he saw naked and slept with, he now has to see her as his mother and honor her as his mother and recognize her as his mother. How? How are you going to look to this woman as your mother now when you saw her naked and you jumped her bones in bed? Are you serious, Muhammad? This is how filthy Muhammad was and how filthy his God was. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, Sam, when Muslims speak about the story of David, you will find the same story in their Quran, but they are ignorant. They do not know. If you go to chapter 38, verse number 23, where it says, this is my brother, he have 99 goats. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the same story. If you go and read the interpretation, you will see that it says, David, he sent a man to die so he can take his wife. He saw her taking a shower. He liked her. And he sent her, her man to carry uh, uh, the, 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 the coffin. And so he will die and he will take her. So the Muslim, they make fun of something in our book, but because they are a bunch of Abdulism, ignorant, illiterate, this is why the Quran, by the way, called the Muslims illiterate and called the Christians <laughs> yeah. people of the book. We are people of the book. The Quran never describes you people of the book for a reason because you don't have one. We are the people of the book. People of the book mean what? It means those who knows God. As simple as that. You know, and, and here, by the way, even this one, the Muslims don't understand because when they say to you that the Prophet was Ummi, they do not know that the word of me is about knowing God, not about knowing how to read and how to write. So if you go to chapter 2, maybe maybe Sam, you can read it for us. Yes. What? Chapter 2, verse 78. Okay, 278. Let me, you want me to read it? Let me read it in English. Okay. Among them are unlettered folk, ummi, that's ummiyun, who do not know the scripture except from hearsay, they but guess. See? So who is the one who ummiyun is the one who do not know the scriptures? I mean, exactly. chapter 3, verse 20, it says the same. Read it for us. Uh, uh, 320 or 120? 20, chapter 3. Okay, 320. Here you go, guys. He's proving to you from the Quran. The word ummi doesn't mean someone who's illiterate, someone who doesn't know the Bible. Okay, 320. And if they argue with thee, you, Muhammad, say, I have surrendered my purpose to Allah, and so have those who follow me. And say unto those who have received the scripture, the book, and those who read read not, who do not read it. Read what? Who surrendered? So that read means it. the ones who have not read it, those are the Umayyun, right? See? So yeah, those who do not know, which means that the illiteracy here is about knowing God. So Quran called Muslims illiterate. They are pagan, even in their book. And the Quran, not a single time, did not call us people for the book. And here, by the way, you will find this is another stupid statement from, from the author of the Quran. Because how we don't have a book no more. And yet you call us people of the book. Yeah. It's like saying to Brother Sam, uh, he will accept my joke, I'm sure, the guy with the hair. 
<laughs> well, I do have hair on my, on my, my cheeks, you know? you know. You know what I mean? Ears, yeah. How you, I mean, uh, just um, I mean, how stupid it is. How you say he is the the the, the uh, like the, the people of the book? If they don't have a book, do we have a book or not? They say your book is corrupt. So how you call us people of the book? I mean, who is the donkey here? <laughs> oh, that's a horse. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, before I go to the next um, Deviant Act, do you have a question? Yeah, we want to okay. uh, we want to deal with this, right? Because we keep pointing out that when we say Aisha was nine years old, and then we back it up with source after source after source, um, we get responses from uh, some of our Muslim friends in the chat, and they'll just make things up. Uh, they'll make things up about Islam. They'll make things up about Christianity. They'll make things up about the Bible. They'll make things up about the Quran, and they just don't seem to care. Now. Guys, you have to pay attention. This is a uh, this uh, pay, for methodological purposes. Watch what happens here because we ask for a source. It's very easy to put a bunch of things up on the screen. And if you're not paying attention to actually what's going on, you could fall for it, right? Okay, so let's go through this, Sam. You ready? Yes, sir. So this is from Muslim now. Let's read. Uh, let's go ahead and read through these because he's going to put all this together and come up with an age of three for Rebecca. You ready? Okay. One, true or false, Sarah gave birth to Isaac at the age of 90, Genesis 17. Well, yeah, she was 90 years old and Isaac was born. Well, then you're busted because let's keep oh. going. Two, Sarah died at the age of 127, according to Genesis 23, 1 through 3. True or false? Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, aha. Ready. Now, three, the incident on, on Mount Moriah, Genesis 22, and the birth of Rebekah happened at the same time. Uh, No. <laughs> Yeah, where are you getting that from, dude? No. Yeah, where are you getting it from? Yeah. In fact, CP will take Shahada and say that Allah is Satan and Muhammad is his messenger. If you can show in Genesis 22 that it says Rebecca was born at that time. Yeah. Now, guys, see see why I said you have to yeah, pay very careful attention, right? If, if the Assyrian Encyclopedia and Christian Prince um, don't immediately know what you're talking about when you say Rebecca was three years old, then it's probably you should be thinking there's probably not evidence for it. And then we ask now. Notice, guys. I, the reason I'm pointing this out is notice when you put something like on this this on the screen, someone might be looking at this and say, "Well, he's giving references there. He's giving references, so I, I guess he's making a slam dunk case here, mm -hmm. right?" Notice everything depends on number three there. The incident on Mount Moriah in Genesis 22 and the birth of Rebecca happened at the same time. When you go down to the bottom, yeah. next comment, when Isaac was 36 or 37 yeah. years old, same time when Sarah died, Genesis 23, the verses all looked together, tells us that Isaac was 37 years old when Rebecca he's was born. He's challenging us to read it. Look, friend, I will take Shahada. Okay, here you go. Okay. Okay. He wants to read Genesis chapter 22, 20 to 24. Let's read it. After these things, Abraham was told, Milcah has also born children to your brother Nahorn. Uz, his firstborn, Buz, his brother, Kamul, the father, Aram. Now watch what he did. Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jitla, and Bethul. This then is, a, this is gets, amazing. This no, is no, amazing no, it's 23. Deception. Okay. Yeah. Bethul became the father of Rebekah. Milcah gave birth to these eight to Nahor, Abraham's brother. His concubine, whose name was Ruma, also bore Tiba, Gaham, Tahash, Mecca. He took a passage <laughs> that talks about this is that horrible. Bethul who's related to Abraham, was the father, became the father epic, and assumes it happened that moment. Yeah, he, he, he says, after these things, Abraham was told, Yes. Milcah has also born children to your brother Nahor. Nahor, yes. Then it goes into a genealogy. Yes. Then it starts giving the genealogy. So and then it mentions Bethul became the father of Rebekah. And then it mentions Bilga gave birth to these eight to Nahor. So it mentions Bethul who's related to Abraham, that he too had a child. Because why she mentioned she's going to be important later in the narrative because Rebekah is going to be the the wife of Isaac. But if you just go to Genesis 24, for the life of me, David. Should we read it? Should we read a little bit of Genesis 24? Yeah, 24, read. I want, as you read it, here's what I want to understand. How many three-year-olds go and get water from a well and take care of flocks? Mm -hmm. How many three-year-olds understand at the age of three... This man is going to come and ask for my hand in marriage. Maybe in his world, in Islam's world, where you have talking trees and talking stones and food that talk and Muhammad riding on a on a, an animal that's between a donkey and a horse, a mule, and ascends throughout the seven heavens. Maybe in that world, in that sick world, right? Or when Satan stays in your, the upper part of your nose and you got to flush him out water. 
or stars are missiles that, that you hurl at Jen. In that world, three-year-olds go to the wells, draw out water, and take care of flocks. Because I'm sure you had your three-year-old son doing that too, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and read, read, read some of this. And guys, we're... we're, we're this isn't just nitpicking here, right? I mean, there's the point that's under discussion, but then there's the larger point, which is, why do they do this, guys, right? Yeah. We, we quote their sources, we tell them what's in their sources, we give them their sources, and then in response, they make up a bunch of stuff yeah. and try to misrepresent people that they claim to respect in the Bible, right? What What is up with this religion? So let's just read a little bit real quick, and then we'll hand it back to CP. Uh, so this is from Genesis 24. Uh, the, the basic idea is Abraham said, go back to my homeland and get a daughter, I mean, get, get a wife for my son Isaac. So he sends his servant with some stuff. All right, so verse 10. Then the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time when women, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, Please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman, to young woman, not toddler, not baby, let the young woman to whom I shall say, please let down your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, drink, and I will water your camels. So she's taking up the water pot and carrying it to, 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 uh, to, to the camels. Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one to whom you have appointed for Three your servant, right? Isaac. Three has to be, has to be. Yeah. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, yeah. the wife of Nahor, Abram, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. Do, do, you have a, do you have any idea what a water jar would be that you use to, to, to give camels a drink? Yeah. Right? All right. I'm a three-year-old. She can do it. She was she's like got Hercules. Yeah. She's got to, right? Yeah, yeah. Allah has strength. The young woman was very attractive in appearance, a, a maiden whom no man had known. Why are they talking about no man knowing her if she's a, if she's a baby or a toddler? Yeah. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, please give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, drink, my lord. And she quickly let down her jar upon her hand and gave him also a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. A three-year-old's so, going to do this. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water. And she drew for all his camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey. Or not. So keep in mind, right? You don't have a, a nice little plastic jar like this, right? You're dealing with some, some really seriously uh, heavy material. And enough to water camels. Have, have any of you ever seen how much a camel can drink? And he's got all of these camels. And this, so let me get this straight. This little three-year-old girl yeah. is carrying around this just giant jar. She's going down, filling this whole thing up with water, enough to go and water a bunch of camels. And she's three. But let me see, let me explain again. This confirms what CP said. They're illiterate, even though he meant they didn't know the book. He took the the annunciation to Abraham. This is how, now I can see why he could misread it this way, because again, he's following Muhammad. He assumed that when the report came to Abraham, Milka has also borne children to your brother Naho, that she bore children then. No, there was no internet. There was no email. There was no rapid transportation. The text is simply saying that word got to him at that time that now that Milka had given birth yeah, so so they're. Uh, but he's taking a no right now, children. So in other words, yeah. she dropped out eight kids right yeah. that moment. They all came up. Blip 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 blip. Notice, so uh, so so no, they're in a completely different part of the world, right? They're in a different part of the world. His family members, different part of the world. There is no email. The only time you'll get notification of something is if a traveler eventually shows up and bothers to tell you the news from back home. So he tells her, oh, and by the way, let me tell let me tell you what's been going on with the family. Our Muslim friend says, "Oh, when he says, when he says that us uh, that Rebecca's been born, this means like right then, right then she's been born, not years earlier. Right then, it happened right then, right when all of this was going on. And you, and so we we have to read all of this about a young woman who's leading who's leading the animals around, doing the farm work, who is three years old, 
Yeah. So you understand the logic of the Muslim? He takes the report given to Abraham. Hey, Milka gave birth to your brother Nahor. She's born children to me. Oh, right now? You mean as I was up on the mountain about to kill Isaac, she just popped out eight kids? As opposed to assuming what the text is saying is, hey, you probably haven't heard. Your brother has children from his wife. It doesn't mean that moment. These kids were born years before, but the word only came to him, got to him at that moment. That's number one. And this proof that it's not saying, the text is not saying that they were born right then, that they were born right then. Proof that doesn't mean they were born right then. You read Genesis 24, she's already a mature woman who can carry, what did she carry again, David, on her shoulder? A bunch of water. bunch of water. But wait, you know, maybe again, you know, it's possible because remember, Muhammad, his mother was pregnant with him for four years before she gave birth to him. In fact, CP. Let's see if I can get this up on the And he's going to put it up. Watch. But CP, here, here's what I want you to do. As he puts it up, maybe this guy is thinking that this is one of the miracles of Allah. You know, that three-year-olds can start speaking and do activities that only mature women and men can do. Because isn't it true that according to the Islamic sources, Muhammad's, preg Muhammad's mother was pregnant with him for four years? Yes. And uh, as you see, uh, my friend, uh, uh, Rebecca was very easy for her as a three years old to feed or to give water to the camel. Camel only need 200 liters of water, 53 gallons. <clears throat> and Rebecca was doing that. Obviously, Rebecca was very, very young. Yeah, yeah. No, super woman. So, so notice 53 gallons. And it said in verse 10 that he took 10 camels. So in 530 gallons of water that this three year old <laughs> toddler would have carried. My goodness. Wait, wait. Do you see what it says there? A typical camel can drink 200 liters, 53 gallons of water in, in three minutes. In three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle, man. Why are you guys laughing, man? Wow. The miracle, the miracle to I actually feel stupid for him. I feel stupid on your behalf. But tell us about the miracle of Muhammad's mother being pregnant with Muhammad for four years. Well, I, I think this is a very amazing miracle. Because uh, obviously, you know, if you are a prophet, you need to stay extra because Allah will install like antenna, uh, fast speed internet, fast processor to receive inspiration, to be able to be squeezed by the angel Jibreel so you can fly even to the space. He's not like us. Uh, actually, there is no way Muhammad can be the son of a guy. His name is Abdullah. You see in Arabic, when somebody is unknown, you can ask any Arab. Unknown person, they call him the son of Abdullah, which means a son of a slave of Allah. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's not even a name. It means that you're a slave of Allah. Yeah, because you're not known. Yeah. You're not known. You know, if you don't, you are not known. So they say, well, he's a son of a slave of Allah, uh, uh, Ibn Abdullah. So he is a son of, he, who is he? We do not know. And this is why you see even the Quran confirm that sometime Muhammad, his name is Muhammad. Sometime his name is Ahmed. Sometimes his name is Mustafa. Sometimes he have 99 names. So where is, what is the real name of Muhammad? Obviously none of those names. And actually, even Islamic scholars, they come and they say that Muhammad's real name was Qatham. Qatham. Yeah. And, in the, and the reason I believe strongly that Muhammad cannot be son of a man, his name is Abdullah, because how Abdullah, his name is Abdullah, but yet he don't believe in Allah. You, yeah, explain that to me, Sifi, because you know, the beauty of Islam, it makes irrationality look logical. So how can that be, CP? He's he's slave of Allah, but he died a kafir, a pagan? Well, uh, isn't it, isn't it uh, uh, Muhammad, he says, Abi wa abu kafir Yes, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my father and your father in the hellfire. So he, how is a slave of Allah, yet he is going to go to, to hell? Secondly, he will go to hell for what? He, he, and th at that time, there is no prophet. You see, isn't it the Quran says Allah will not judge any nation unless he sent them a prophet? Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct? Okay. So who is the one who came as a prophet to the tribe of Muhammad before Muhammad to tell them what is the true Islam? If there is, then there is no need for Muhammad. Thank you. Right? Yeah. And, uh, 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 in, the, in the same time, the Muslim, they say uh, Ishmael, he came. Correct? Don't they say Ishmael, he came to Mecca? Yes. Okay. But what the Quran says, the Quran says we never sent a messenger or a prophet unless he is from the people speaking the tongue of the people. So, uh, 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 Ishmael, neither Abraham 
neither Isaac, neither any of those, they are from the Arab or speak the tongue of the Arab. Even in Islamic books, they say that Ishmael, he learned the Arabic in the age of 14 years old. Some they say 11. Chapter 14, verse number 4 says, we never send a messenger unless he speak the tongue of his people. So how anyone can go to hell, if we ask Muhammad, if he have, he, like he never been sent the warner, which verse is speaking about warner Muslims? Anyone can tell us? We never judge a nation unless we send them a warner. Okay, who is the warner for the father of Muhammad before Muhammad? If you will say none, then how he will go to hell? Precisely. By the way, CP, uh, uh, the Christians are still shocked. They're now expecting the next Marvel movie to be about Rebecca because the three-year-old Rebecca puts Captain Marvel to shame, She-Hulk a, sh a shame, and Wonder Woman. So guys, the next Marvel movie is going to be about Rebecca. Right, <clears throat> because Rebecca, stronger than Superman, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel combined. Captain Marvel ain't got nothing on Rebecca. This again shows you how desperate these people are. Like Sam O'Day says, "Do the math, do the math." You see, she was born at that time. Let me repeat mm -hmm. again: the point of Genesis 22. If you just read it, it's not They're saying not, that's what I mean. They're not reading it. They're going to a website and cutting and pasting. Tell me you're not doing that, Sam Oda. Of course he's doing Lie that. to me and tell me you're not just going to some website and cutting and pasting. Yeah. Because if you would read the text, that's not what it says. Yeah. It's not what it says. Let me emphasize for the Christians here. This is why I was taken back and I got shocked. My look, I go, serious? The text is saying that word look, he's got just, to he's Abraham. Just reporting, he's yeah. just repeating what we just went well, through. Well, let me, let me but emphasize he's a different it, guy. Let me emphasize for the Christians. Christians. Word, the only the only thing the text is saying is that word got to Abraham at that time. Your brother Nahor, he's got children because his wife gave birth to children. It's not saying, oh, Abraham, by the way, when you're on the mountain, miraculously, at that moment, Nahor slept with his wife and she popped out eight b babies. Bam, 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 bam. This is the miracle of Allah. We understand the context, if you're going to read it honestly, that there is no email there is no what ups we didn't have the mail system that we have now mail service they had no social media facebook it takes time for word to travel so all the text is saying and if you understand why the text is saying it because now that abraham knows hey my brother has children that means when isaac gets mature enough the age of marriage i won't marry him off to a canaanite i can get him a wife from my father's house because now my brother has children but it doesn't say she gave birth that moment it says the report came to abraham at that moment that his brother has children not he had children that moment but it's again an example of what we said you guys are so shameless and so Just wicked and dishonest it's <laughs> gotta be spiritual the same spirit yeah, I, I that possessed know. Muhammad, that evil spirit, is possessing you to pervert scriptures. But it's only humiliating you, your prophet, and your God. Yeah, but guys, this is. I, I mean, I, I don't know how. I don't know how you can't. You can't get this right. It, it's saying a traveler came from a long, long, long way away, and he said, "Oh, and by the way, children have been born." The Muslims are reading that and going, "Oh, this means that she was born right then, so we can we can put this together." Not, "Hey, I'm giving you the news of your family because you haven't heard the news for many years because you left that so land a because... long, long time ago. You left that land a long, long time ago. You haven't been there in decades. I'm telling you the news from your homeland." And they say, "Oh, it says Rebecca was born. That means right then that when, <laughs> that she's born right when this guy is speaking." This is amazing. I swear to this you, is... I, went, I went like, you know how the computer shuts down? I shut down for a second. That's why I was like, what? I but don't they, know. And notice, guys, they're, they're all doing this. We Guys, we don't do this with your sources. We don't do this with your sources. Why do you do it with our sources? Because you have to? All right. Go ahead, CP. Go ahead, CP. Sorry, man. This is your time, but you see what the Muslims are doing. You have a clear sign, clear a source, not source, from Muslim books saying that <laughs> she was. If you can't get us the same, feel free. Otherwise, you are just playing games, and it's it's a very stupid. It's it's not even mature. Pathetic. It's pathetic. By the way, just to, uh, uh, go ahead, it, CP. Finish your point. I'm sorry. Forget about those children. I want to ask you. I don't know. David or Sami can help me. Yeah. Don't want the Muslim because we mentioned Ishmael and uh, Abraham. They came to Mecca, correct? Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, the Muslims say that. Yes. For me, verse number thirty-four, chapter four, please. Chapter thirty-four, verse four of the Quran. Yes. Can you read for us and help me? I'm I'm really confused here. Okay. I was going to... four, verse... first. This verse is helping me. So it's chapter 34, right? 
3444. Okay, 44, because I said you said 344. Okay, let me get it for you. One second, sorry. 3444. Okay, now I'm going to read it. And we have given them no scriptures which they study, nor sent we unto them before you any warner. So who is the... It's just say there is no warners. Exactly. This is talking to Muhammad's people. So who is who is Ishmael, Ishmael then? Why, why Muslim they say to us Ishmael when there? <clears throat> Thank you. I want to make sure people got your point. Guys, understand what CP is saying. CP, how does this prove Ishmael could not have gone to Mecca? Connect it for us. Well, if there is no messenger came, then there is no messenger came. It's, it's very simple. Who is the who is the Arabian prophet before Muhammad? I challenge any Muslim to give us the name of the Arabian prophet. Who is he? Any Muslim can tell us? Nobody. The Quran says we never send the messenger unless in the tongue of his people. All right. Then and then we we find that verse is saying that there is they don't have any messenger. You know. Yeah. So there is no messenger. It says that it's not me. And if you go to any tafsir, al tabari, al tabari, whatever you want, it says we never send the messenger before you. Okay, so as long there's never have a messenger before you, so why you lie to us and you say Ishmael he was there? Why you lie to us and you say Abraham was there? And now, as long you are speaking about Rebecca trying to get away from the whole idea, by the way, to make us forget about spanking Muhammad, don't even try. You are just trying playing games to get us away from your prophet, who is the joke of, of the century, the joke of everybody, even in his time. So Muhammad saying, we never sent the messenger before you. And then Muhammad says to you that Allah sent Abraham to build the Kaaba. And then he says to you, and Ishmael, he helped him. And he says to you, I am from the children of Ishmael. And then he say, I never sent the messenger, a warner before you. And we never sent the book. Does it say that is a uh, Sam too? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah. so right here, I can read it one more time. We have given no scriptures to them which they study, nor have we sent before you any warner. It's right there, 34.4. So here I'm not going to say, uh, uh, it says here you have a children, and there it says you have potato, and there it says it clearly, we never send the messenger before you, we never send the book before you. So obviously Muhammad is a scam, it's in front of you. So stop <laughs> guessing in games, trying to, now, any, uh, what the Muslim trying to convince us, it is not only our prophet is a perverted, we can find you one in your book. That's the whole point, supposedly. But it doesn't work this way, my friend. If you show me a verse saying, this guy, he married from this, uh, 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 etc., then, you you know, good for you. But you start guessing and here, and you're making things up. And especially when we speak about religion, we have to go by what people believe. You see, when I say this verse saying that, I'm not giving you my own meaning. I go and see Al-Tabari. I go and see Al-Qurtubi. So can you show me where the Jews, they even agree with that? You cannot. Because it doesn't happen. So what you must then try, you try to make a new meaning of a verse to fit with your agenda and propaganda. And that is dishonesty. But when we show you something about your prophet, we show you what it says exactly. We accept what the Muslim they quote about it. And we say, this is what it says. Answer us. You have no answer. In your case, what do you do? You fabricate meaning. It's not there. Yeah, it's not. And I just want to hammer one point. I don't want them to lose it. Note, CP, David Wynn and I gave source or sauce after sauce after sauce, all confirming Aisha was nine, year old, nine years old. The Muslims say she wasn't. Muslims tell us Rebecca is three years old, and yet there's not a single source that says she's three. They have to misread the text to make it three. So do you notice the pattern here? We try to be as honest as possible and read the text and see what the text in, themselves say and report and the text say she's nine, not true. The Bible nowhere says she's three. And the clear evidence is she was mature. She was old enough and mature enough to get married. But no, she was a three-year-old minor. You see how wicked and evil this religion is? I just wanted to just share that. But um, you, got a re you got a refutation here. And then we have another issue. Um, the, the mistranslation of Bukhari 476 that uh, Ali's been using up there to show that Aisha was actually much older. Remember the uh, the you you got the parallel right? Yes, the Aisha Yuli version. It, okay, yeah. so you do that while uh, uh, Christian Prince can answer this. Uh, uh, Ali says, CP, he says the Quran said that Abraham and Ishmael visited Mecca, but it does not say they settled there. They built the Kaaba. That's it. What's wrong with you, CP? So apparently Ali is saying uh, Abraham and Ishmael went to Mecca. 
that so they traveled all the way from the land of Israel all the way down into the Arabian desert to Mecca, built the Kaaba and then left. So he's, he's claiming something along those lines. Yep. Well, isn't it here funny that uh, the Muslims, they are very confused about their books. First, we can show them from their books where it says that the first one who built the Kaaba, it was not Abraham, it was the angels. And they built it 40 years before Abraham, before Adam. And then Adam, Allah, he sent him down to Sri Lanka. And then Adam, he went to, uh, to, to Mecca 40 times in 40 years. And Adam is not the one who built the Kaaba. But if you go in the Quran, chapter 2, it says that Ibrahim is the one who built the house. But remember here, obviously Muhammad is a very funny person. He did not say which house. Uh, can you can you read for us the verse, uh, 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 Sam? Which the chapter? Verse? Chapter two, one twenty-seven. Okay, let me get it for you. Okay, let me just do it. Chapter two, verse one twenty-seven. One second, guys, because I had to also get the hadith that this guy is misquoting. Yeah, forget the fact that you know what, what we said. Two one twenty-seven. Here you go. Let me read it. Two one twenty-seven. And when Abraham and Ishmael were raising the foundations of the house, Abraham prayed, "Our Lord, accept from us this duty. Lo, you only you are the hearer, the knower." So does it say this house where? No. Okay. If we go and read it from verse number 20, 122, you will see it says, O oh, children of Israel, correct? Yeah, let me get 122. Okay, 122. Here you go. O oh, children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and how I prefer, for, preferred you to all creatures. So how, how Allah preferred them, he mentioned the story of Abraham, correct? Yeah. Okay, so Abraham belonged to who? The, the Israelites. He never mentioned the Arab. Where is the Arab here in the story? And this house is built for who? Built for the Jews. So if we assume that the Kaaba is the house, it should be the house of the Jews. Because Allah in the chapter 2 speaking, all of it is about Abraham and Moses and the Jews. So Allah saying to the Jews, remember my favor upon you. I favor you upon all mankind. And by the way, the Muslims, they say that the Jews are racist. They say they are. And even the Quran says the Christian and the Jews, they say we are favored by God. You eat it. It's the Quran saying that. The two Quran itself saying that, that that the Jews are the favored by God, as you see. And then it says, and uh, and then it start talking about Abraham. And Abraham, he built a house where people, they go around it, but it doesn't say where. And then Ishmael was with him, but it doesn't say where. And then he says he he, he left up the, 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 the base of the house, but it doesn't say where. But remember, aren't we, we just ask you, uh, Sam, Chapter 34, verse number 44. It says, we never sent them a yep. book. We never sent we them a warner. sent no warners or scripture to your people oh. before you. Who was going around the Kaaba then? If if Abraham built the Kaaba, forget about Abraham, he left. All right? Okay, Abraham built the Kaaba. People, they start coming and going around this hole without any anybody to warn them, say, hey, guys, come go around it, etc. This is stupid. So if Abraham, he was there, obviously he spoke about his religion. And he preached about it. And then Ishmael, according to the Muslims, he married from an Arab, Arab woman. And even they believe that Muhammad, he is descended from Ishmael. So how he left? Yeah. How he left? Secondly, if the Quran says there's no warner and there's no book before you. So there's no book and there's no warner. Abraham was not there. Ishmael was not there. And the house which uh, Abraham he built obviously is not there too. Exactly. There's no way of getting around it. All right, guys, we're only going to go a couple more minutes because uh, we've been going a long time real quick. And I um, uh, want to body. respond to this claim by Ali because he's been using this in the chat over and over and over again. That Sahih al-Bukhari 476 shows that Aisha was much older than nine years old. What's ironic about this? Well, we can give passage after passage after passage after passage after passage in Sahih al-Bukhari, showing that Aisha was nine years old when her prophet climbed on top of her and had sex with her. Passage after passage after passage. Ali says, no, all of those are wrong. And so I'm going to Sahih al-Bukhari, number 476, and that's going to show you that the yeah. rest of Bukhari is wrong when it talks about their age. Yeah, and just let me real quickly tell you guys, I want you honestly, and I say this from my I want you to praise the Lord Jesus Christ for raising up people. I'm not saying me specifically. The Lord Jesus is amazing. He raises up people to do the work to refute these lies because I already have an article on this. Mm -hmm. 
this is article. And I thank Jesus for the blessing of actually having me encounter this objection so that we can then provide responses because we're doing it for you guys to mm -hmm. use it to expose these lies. He's yep. he's quoting the Hadith. So num number 476, I'll just read the beginning yes. here because that's where the point and is And you made. got a different num versification. Number, number 476, right? narrated Aisha, the wife of the prophet, I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. Mm. Not a day passed, but the prophet visited us both in the mornings and evenings. So notice she's saying that she had reached puberty way before the time yes. when Muhammad actually married her. So if she'd reached puberty way before the time that Muhammad had married her, obviously she was a much older woman when yeah. Muhammad had sex with her. And therefore all the rest of Bukhari is wrong, but we can trust this passage in yeah. Bukhari. And all the rest of the Hadith and the Sirah, everything is wrong. Ibn Kathir is wrong. Everyone's wrong because we've got this passage right here. Unless they're, so notice, even if this did say that Aisha had reached puberty years earlier, years before mar marriage to Muhammad, even if it did say that, you would have to be saying that this somehow outweighs the dozens and dozens yeah, of other sources for the age of Aisha. That's what you'd have to be claiming. So you'd be putting a lot of weight on this. But should they be doing that, no. Sam? No, because interestingly, I have a different versification because it's an updated version. Yep. It's mine's 465. I'm now going to show you Aisha Buli. She's a Muslima. She translates the same narration. This is not what the Arabic says, and if you if we were able to put the Arabic, see if he could confirm it. Here is the same narration from Aisha Buli, which is online. Now I'm going to read the same narration, okay? It is really that Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, said, I have no recollection of my parents doing anything but following the deen of Islam. Let me repeat it again. I have no recollection of my parents doing anything but following the deen of Islam. No mention of puberty. She was saying that she was too young. I mean, I'm sorry. That as long, when she could remember and recall things, she could not remember her parents being other than Muslim. Let me repeat again. I have no other recollection of my parents doing anything but following the deen of Islam. When she could recall things from her earliest memory, they were always Muslims. Says nothing about puberty. And I'm going to, again... Uh, can you me, uh, Sam, can you give me the, the hadith he is talking about? So yes, can, uh, it's, no. it's Sahih al-Bukhari number 476 in, in, the, the, uh, in, the, in the Darul Salaam edition. Yeah, which would be on sunnah.com. I don't know if we can get it for him. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can get it for you. Let me yeah, their number is different. Can you give me a link? Can you find me send it to me? Sunnah.com. As you find it, he'll read Arabic. As you find it, now I'm going to read here. I'm going to read you again. You be able to pull it up on Kalamala. Oh, you can't? You, yeah, Kalamala? It'll, it'll, it'll take a minute. But. All right, yeah. It'll, give us a minute, Sibi, because we want you to read. Okay, now. I read Aisha Buley's alternate translation of Bukhari. No mention of puberty. It's simply, she's saying, as far back as I can recall things, when I was mature enough to recall things, not I reached puberty, I could not remember my parents being other than Muslims. That's all the narration it's saying. It doesn't say that, you know, when I had... Attain puberty, I remember, because you have children before they reach puberty, they can recall things. That's what she's talking about. Another narration confirms the same thing. This comes from Sal Bukhari, Aisha Buli, and it's found also in the Muhammad Muskin Khan version. It is related that Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, said, I only remember my parents following the deen. That's all the, the hadith is saying. It's not talking about whether she was pubescent. It's saying that as far back as she could remember things, because remember, there are things in our childhood we don't remember because we're too young. But then there's a point in which we start remembering things, we start recalling things, we start becoming aware of things. So she's simply saying, from the moment I could be aware of things around me, recall things around me, all I could remember was that my parents followed Islam. It says nothing about her being pubescent. That's a mistranslation by Muhammad Muskhan Khan. And it's ironic because Muhammad Muskhan Khan, a Salafi, would agree that Aisha had attained puberty when Muhammad married her because it's Muhammad Muskhan Khan who quotes Ibn Hajar al-Askalani explaining why Aisha was allowed to play with dolls while living with Muhammad. And he says the reason why Aisha was allowed to play with dolls even though she married Muhammad and was living in his home is because she had attained puberty. And as, I, as uh, CP said, there are sources that say she only attained puberty after she was 14. But he's going to try to get the Arabic for you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get it up on the screen. Hopefully, right now, we'll see how this goes. Give it to me uh, first, uh, David, so I can read it in, from my side. Can you give me the link, please? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. There. I got it on the screen. Um, okay, well, let me... Uh, all, yeah, all I've got the link for is okay, Sahih I'm going to get it. I'll get you... Well, I can't do that. i got to go to send it. I can't send it to you. 
Okay, he's going to put it on the screen, see if you see it. Because I can't send you the link uh, from my end unless I... All right. Just be sure that we are we getting the same thing. Yeah. All right. Let's see if that... Uh, okay. It says, and I share and I say, and I ask as a word. Lam Akhal Abu, well, I'm a man. Okay. Okay. Where is it says there until I reach the age of a puberty? Thank you. That, that's the confirm English, it. Yeah, that's the English translation. So you don't see it in the Arabic there? Uh, David, I want you to do me a favor. Mm -hmm. I want the guy who gave us this hadith to promise us to call us live on air and to read the hadith and translate word by word. Uh-huh. Do you do it? CP, let me confirm what you said. He just read the Arabic. It's in front of his eyes. The Arabic, was I right and Aisha Buley right? There is no word for puberty in that hadith. Where do you get this from? He got what? it from Muhammad Muskhan Khan English. The English. Which word? English. It says, See, so they, they lie in the translation and they base their evidence on lies. Uh -huh. The hadith in the front of us and we challenge any Abdul to call us live and translate word by word. Actually, we can use Google translation. We will see it's not there. <clears throat> yeah. Is so, someone hearing this? So, 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 so notice, notice the Islamic methodology, ladies and gentlemen. You've got Ali here. He's a Muslim. He's clearly bothered by the idea, by the claim that his prophet would have sex with a nine-year-old girl. So what does he do? Well, we've got dozens and dozens of sources claiming that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad climbed on top of her. Uh, we've had we've had Muslims already during this live stream say, oh, but if you go to Ibn Asad, sorry, wrong. Oh, but if you go to Atabari, what does Tabari say? Over and over and over again, says she was nine years old. Uh, and now you have, ah, but if you read Sahih al-Bukhari 476 in the Musin Khan translation into English, it says, it talks about her reaching the age of puberty. Oopsie, not in the Arabic. It's not in the Arabic. Sam went Sam went with the Aisha Buley translation, not one word. Why? Because it's not in the Arabic. Christian Prince read it in Arabic. There's not one word about her reaching puberty. What does that mean? It means this is a mistranslation, whether deliberate or by accident. And notice what the Muslim does. I will take a mistranslation of this text. I will ignore what the Arabic actually says, and I will use this mistranslation to ignore and throw out all of the other crystal clear, correct translations, which say she was nine years old. Why? Because that's what I need to do in order to keep my confidence in my prophecy. What it says in Arabic, what's your name on Skype real quickly? What it says in Arabic, I did not remember, I did not quote my parents, except that they are Muslim. This was says. He translated the word aqal as, as uh, she ah. reached the age of a puberty. But aqal is from knowing, learning. Yes. Aqal, naqal, yeah, the difference. <laughs> Parents, except they are Muslims. This is what it says have nothing to do. She is reaching the age of a puberty. This is a stupid, this is a lie, and this is a fabrication. At the same time, if we accept that this is hadith according to the Muslim translation is true, that means Sahih al-Bukhari is a book of garbage because in one hadith in Bukhari it says, and this is Sahih, that she is six. In tons of hadith actually it says she is six, and she died when, when Muhammad he died, she was she left with him only for nine years. And he did have intercourse with her at the age of nine. And this is mentioned in Bukhari, Turmuzi, all over, and it's called Sahih. So how in the world we can trust such a stupid religion? But this is the only way we fabricate a translation. And we claim that this is what it's meant to puberty, when the word puberty never mentioned there. Lam aqil abawai illa wa huma yudinan. I did not recognize my parents except they are following this religion, which means since I was a child, I always know my parents are Muslims. Where it says I reached the age of property, I challenge anyone actually to show is where is the word attained, where is the word age, and where is the word puberty in the hadith. It's none. So you guys heard it? Aql does not mean puberty. Aql means to intellect, knowledge. That when okay. I could recall and know things, my recollection is they were always Muslims. That's all it says. Actually, the same word is exist in the Quran. So how they can change it, you know? <laughs> I mean, if, if the word here means puberty, isn't it the Quran use exactly the same word? Chapter 2, verse number 44, Afala ta'qilun. Chapter 2, 73, ta'qilun. Chapter 2, 75, aqilu. Chapter 2, 76, ta'qilun. Chapter 2, 164, ya'qilun. Chapter 2, 170, Ya'kulun, chapter 2, 171, Ta'qilun. I mean, what's wrong with you? 
always you can read all those verses, the translation, it's me have nothing to do with the property. So how the word aqal mean a property? When it is it's mentioned in the Quran more than 50 times, and not a single time mention that it say except acknowledge, understand. Can you read for us uh, uh, some any any of those I mentioned? Chapter 2, verse number 44. Let me get it for you. Hold on. Chapter 2, what? 44. Okay, chapter 2, verse 44. Here we go. Oh, this religion, I'm ready to convert CP. It has so much truth and so rational. You're going to make me go to the mosque and take Shahada. Chapter 2, verse, one more time. 44. Okay, here you go. Here's the word aql, folks, the one that was used in the hadith. Chapter 2, verse 44. Enjoy you, enjoin you righteousness upon my mankind while you yourselves forget. Are you readers of the scripture? Have you no sense? No sense? No uh, sense. No percent. Okay, you said this translation is by Shakir or who? Uh, which one? I'm reading this was Pikthal. No, the hadith. I mean the hadith. Well, the hadith was Muhammad Muskhin Khan. Khan. Okay, can you read for us this, the, the translation for this verse by Khan? Yes. <laughs> Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. No, no, I mean you can read for us. verse by, by, in the Hillel Khan. Khan translation. By hand translation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I see what you meant. You want the okay. Mm -hmm. Here's Hilali. Uh, here's Muskhan Khan's translation of the Quran, chapter two, verse forty-four. <clears throat> Here he goes. The same gentleman that translated Bukhari. This one. Enjoin you al -bir, on the people, and you forget yourselves while you recite the scriptures. Have you then no sense? So you see the hypocrisy? How there he translated the same word as a Asia for puberty, and here it says have no sense, no no acknowledge, no no not knowing. You see? The same guy who translated the hadith is the same guy translating the Quran for the same exact word. Double standard, hypocrisy, and false translation. And let me just say, Waqas Ahmed, I think he's Muslim. Yes, he asked. So it means intellect instead of age of puberty? Yes. The word is aql. It means intellect, not puberty. Yes, no, got it. No. Ya qulul amr, I, he acknowledged it and he understood it. So oh, what she is saying, I, as I know, you do not need to be a genius to, to, to figure out that your parents, they were Muslims, praying since you are a child that they are Muslims. So stop lying. And by the way, we can go right now to the dictionary and you will get busted. So, or Jesus. we are desperately trying, and by the way, I mean, even your scholars saying, I mean, they have long articles saying, refuting the lies of those who say Aisha, she was not sex. It is you who make articles saying, refuting the lies. So, when you Muslim try to defend desperately, because you are fe 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 feeling the shames, uh, we understand. We understand. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the dictionary right now, uh, 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 David. You can put it in the screen, and everybody see that this is have nothing to do with uh, uh, reaching any age. It's about knowing, recognizing, understanding, reali realizing, and here we go. This is the dictionary. I will give it to David. He can put it in the screen. This is your Islamic dictionary. Have nothing to do with me, with David, with Sam. It's your book. You got it right there. All right. Here we go. Make sense, listen to reasons, make reasonable or rational, make reasonable or rational, uh, apprehend, comprehend, conceive, grasp, perceive, realize, understand. That's all. None of them is about age of puberty, as you see. This is your Muslim translation. I have nothing to do with this. Why you lie? <clears throat> so, do you see, so, do you see puberty there, David? What's that? Do you Aaron. see the word? Yeah, I already put it up there. Right. Do you say it says a puberty, age, anything about age or puberty? <laughs> comprehend, comprehend, conceive, grasp. Yeah, that's it. You got it right there. Islam got decimated again. You destroyed Islam by the grace of Jesus Christ. Exposed them for their inconsistency. Now the, the, the game, the game is because you don't speak Arabic, they take advantage of that, mm -hmm. and they say, "We go, I show you." But but they will not tell you that they themselves they don't accept even translation for their books. Like if we ask a Muslim, which translation for the Quran is accepted to be correct translation? They will say none. None. Mm -hmm. Why? Because simply it's none. None of them is made to translate. All the English translation for the Quran is made to promote Islam, not to translate Islam. Mm -hmm. That's right. So in Arabic, I have all the books of Ibn Kathir in my shelf. 
and you go to the English one, you will find there's uh, like the books is gone. Like where I can find in the book of Ibn Kathir in English the story of Al Gharaniq, it's gone. Where it says that he bowed down, it's gone. Where it says that he says their intercession is a must, it is gone. So they took it from the Arabic in the translation process, and suddenly total story, which is extremely important in English, is not there. Uh, as an example, when we speak about Aisha, Aisha, she speak about, she is playing with her dolls, but the, when they translate the word dolls, in fact, it does not say doll in all the hadith. In some hadith, it says banati. What banati mean? My daughters. Mm. So Aisha, she did not call her dolls, dolls. She called them daughters. If you go to Sunan Ibn Majah, I will give you one by one. As an example, I used to play with dolls. The fact doesn't say that. Kuntu al-abu bil banat. And here we go. I will give you the link, uh, 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 David. You will see that it does not say dolls. This is false translation. It is a hypocrisy. It is a lie. It says bil banat. She considered them her daughters. Hmm. Which means she is not only a child. She is living the age of a childhood in full. She thinks that dolls are real creatures and they are her daughters. Different hadith and all the hadith I will send to you is sahih, not from Sahih Bukhari only. Here we go. This is the second one. You can put them in the screen one by one. Look, the translation says dolls. In Arabic, it says bil banat. Banat, you ask anyone who speaks Arabic, what banat mean? Daughters. Daughters. And, and we continue and even even when they uh, uh, when we speak uh, uh, about uh, look at this one as an example this is Sahih Bukhari it says here I used to play with the dolls but in Arabic it doesn't say, you know what I'm going to make a picture so people will see the word banat I will highlight the word banat in Arabic so they see how they lie in the translation never a trust an Islamic translation I will make a line under the, the, the in the picture here and we send it to you David Okay, here it says, it, with the dolls, but in fact, in Arabic, it says, Al-Banat. And I challenge any Muslim who speak Arabic to say, we are lying. Here we go. This is the image I will send it to you, David, in a second. Put it and let everybody see how they lie. Be and why they change the word daughters and make it dolls? Because daughters, it's obvious that this girl, she is just a kid. Dolls, maybe she is, uh, you know, she collect dolls from her childhood. Maybe. But, but CP, let me encourage you to do a video for your YouTube page on the deception of Muhammad Muskhan Khan to benefit the non Arabic speaking Christians. Show the hadith, show why he lied, correct it because we need this also on video. Because from your end, you can put the images, right? Yeah. And I, I sent. David, I send you a picture, a, a, a snapshot in the screen. Yeah. You can put it in the screen. Uh, I don't see it. Oh. oh, I need to send it. Okay, hold on. I need to click send. Okay, yeah. now you get it. Do that for the benefit of others, so that you, because you're able to put images, so we can have a short video on it to present to Muslims and to Christians, so they don't be deceived by Muhammad Muskin Khan's mistranslation of that hadith. All, not only Muhsin Khan, all Islamic translation is false. As you see, this is different translators for those hadith. All of them, they are saying those when the fact it says banat, banati, you know, when Muhammad, he came and he left the curtain off and he found Aisha playing. She, he said to her, what are you playing with? She said, banati, banati. He said, let, let me, let me send you this hadith. This hadith is horrible. It's literally horrible. How in the world Muslims accept this? Let me show you. Here we go. Let us highlight this one. It says, in here, she left the, the curtain and she was playing in the translation. It says, my dolls. But in the Arabic, says, banatin li Aisha, daughters of Aisha. He said to her, what is this? She said, qalat banati. In English, he said, he said to her, what is this? She said, my dolls. But in fact, in Arabic, it doesn't say my dolls. And here we go. We take a snapshot, we send it to David, and everybody will see in a second. And this is Sahih, uh, 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 Sunan Ibn Dawood, Hadith number 4932. I will send you the link to it. says Sahih. This is Sahih too. Let us send me the link, the, the, the image. 
in a second. I mean, do you see uh, how easy it is to get them busted? But the whole point is, okay, we mention things to them and they don't speak Arabic. And because they don't speak Arabic, we can claim whatever, you know, as simple as that. Do you have it? Uh, it's, it's coming to you now. And this is a link for the hadith after you pause the picture because I highlight for you the word Banati, my daughters, so people will see the word and they will recognize it. And you can go, by the way, the easiest way to get this busted is very easy. Let me tell you what you can do. You can open this link. Click at translate by Google and you will see even Google will find you where it says my daughters. Even Google will make it daughters, not dolls. You see, if you open it with the with Google browser, you can click at the side of the page and click at the translate. There's an option for translate. Click translate to English. And then you will see two translations in the page. The original and the one which was in Arabic will turn into English. And then you will see that even Google translation Translating the word Banati as my daughter, not my dolls. So question, why Aisha the mature? She is calling her dolls in all the hadith, my daughters. That's a good question, CP. Mm. Because this is the miracle of Islam. That yeah. when when Aisha has these, these dolls, she can breathe into them and they become daughters of Aisha because she can breathe life into dolls like jesus breathed life into a clay bird like allah breathed life into clay what's wrong with you cp a potato yeah open the the, the page almost is coming to you the image uh, david you will see it says banati not only banat banati my daughters the last image i just sent you is downloading now it says banati my daughters imagine so what we will do with this and this is all is your hadith and it says there sahih sahih For Muhammad, you... I think you get it now, uh, David. No, no, still downloading. Poor Muhammad, what did you do to him? No, this is why speaking Arabic is a problem for the Abdul. This is why they avoid those who speak Arabic because we, we know uh, uh, they cannot play the game of uh, you don't know, and they cannot say to you, uh, Elijah means God is with us. Why not? <laughs> Elijah means God with us. I mean, by, by the grace of God, we covered a lot. What do you want to do now, my friend? Yeah. We're over two hours, close to three. Yeah. We can go for hours, but should probably wrap it up. Yep, yep, yep. You got the final comments from your part, CP? Because we're close to three oh, hours. That came up. Yeah. It just show this page, the, the image I showed. Yeah. And you will see that it says, my daughters. I highlighted in red under the words in Arabic. It says, my daughters. So why Muslims, uh, they lie because simply they are ashamed of their cult. A God, a prophet who approve marrying children who they are praying with their daughters, which is nothing but those. All right, so we got this up on the screen for the Arab speakers, the Arabic you speakers. It. You see it, All right? Guys, pay attention to the Arabic. He's underlining it. It's my daughters, not my dolls. Aisha talking about her dolls as if they're her daughters and yet Ali and Dale Lee are still convinced that she was a grown woman of course that's the miracle nine years old three years old three years old Rebecca can do things that even Superman could only dream of and Wonder Woman obviously so obviously salivates. she puts Captain so, Marvel so she's kind of the reverse right um Rebecca who was three years old is living like a grown woman Aisha who was a grown woman is living like a three-year-old girl. Exactly. Right. That's it. It's over. And David, you notice the story that this is where Muhammad uh, 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 he's getting his stories from the Jews. Even Aisha, she knows about the stories mm -hmm. about the flying horse. Do you see the story there? The yeah. story. He said, the "Yeah, Solomon, right? Solomon had a flying horse, right?" Mm -hmm. This happened right after Muhammad. He went to the seven eleven heaven in the top of, of, yeah. of a mule. Yeah, exactly. Seven eleven. That's the best store to be. 7-Eleven, 24-7. So what's the, any, any any final objections for, for to CP that you can answer? No, that we should wrap it up, yeah. Hey, oh, CP, what's your final comments for tonight, friend? My final, final comment, that Abdulism is Abdulism. And it's false. It is stupid. There's no God who provides us 
women private part in heaven because God is holy. He is not a pimp. There's no God he will make for us falafel. There's no God he is going to make a river of wine because we are not a bunch of a drunk people going to the bar. There's no God who will promise me a bracelet of gold in my hand. That's stupid. I can get one right now. There's no God he promised me I will wear a green silk. That's boring. Imagine living entire life in eternity with the green silk will never be replaced. And there's no God he promised me 80,000 little boys around me. That is a child abuse and this is sick and disgusting. And there's no God he promised me children who they are very white. And there's no God will promise me women I can see through their bones and their marrow because this is not only sick, this is disgusting. Where, what is the beauty of the women if I can see her bones? Go and look at the x-ray from now and see how you enjoy it. This is the most stupid ever cult. Follow the Messiah, the Christ, the Word of God, the one which the Quran says, he is the Word of God who was sent down to this earth. Your Quran witness for that, in the top of that, Jesus the Christ now is a living in Islam. While in Islam Jesus is living, Muhammad is dead. And you Muslim, you will die soon. And we will die soon. And one day we will stand in the front of the Lord Jesus and he will ask you how you follow a perverted man who promised you women and private parts and extended penis. Shame on you to believe in that. Follow the true God who teach nothing but to be holy. Be holy the same as your father. This is what the Bible says. And thank you, David. Thank you, Sam, for having me. May the Lord bless you. Love you for the sake of Jesus. And tomorrow we're going to be on my final night live with David for a while. So Lord Jesus willing, tomorrow we're going to be on for my final live show with David next to him. We'll probably do live shows where, wherever I'm at, but tomorrow the final one. So make sure you're on 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Lord Jesus willing and pray for our anointing. Pray for CP. God will provide for him, preserve him, and bless him mightily. And again, everyone, uh, the, the links to uh, CP's uh, YouTube channel, his Minds account, his Facebook uh, his Patreon page and his books on Amazon, those are all in the description box. So don't leave without either subscribing or uh, signing up as a, as a patron or, or getting one of those books. Uh, people need to know this information. You got to get the information that's in uh, CP's head. You got to get that into your head and then use that. And if you do that, I believe we will change the world. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what have we seen this evening over and over again? It's the same thing we see every time we go live. We are quoting sources. We are accurately representing what those sources say. The response from the religion of truth is to lie about what's in our sources and lie about what's in their sources. And it's still going on. Even up to, even up to right now, it's still going on. Look at Ali. There are more than one evidence that Aisha was older. And end of the day, Hadith are not infallible and can be wrong. Right. Okay. So so notice what we have here. We have dozens and dozens of sources, Muslim sources, saying that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad climbed on top of her. You've got Ibn Kathir saying that there is no dispute am among the Muslims. There's no dispute on this issue. There's no dispute, ladies and gentlemen, until you get down to now when Muslims are embarrassed and humiliated by this. So they want to throw out all of history. Well, Ali, you gave us your best case and your best case was a mistranslation. Your best, your best response was a mistranslation. Guess what? There is no evidence that Aisha was older. All you have are more misrepresentations. That's all you have. That's all you have. I mean, obviously, in all this time that we've been covering this, you could have very easily given us one source that says she was older than nine. You couldn't. Why? Because you don't have any. All right. So we hope, uh, <laughs> Ali, we hope, you'll, we hope you'll realize, look, if you're embarrassed and humiliated by your prophet, then it's time to get a new prophet. Um, so everyone else, I hope you see the true heart of this religion and where it, where it really stands. We'll see you all, Lord willing, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Catch you then. Thank you, guys.